Hi and welcome to our Open Stop Motion Film Project. I'm sorry I delayed this time too because Wirecast will not take the mics every other time. Uh, I have to restart it several times to get it to take it. And then today I had visit of my granddaughter and I have just driven her home and you know a six year old girl then a child then you have a lot of cleaning up to do afterwards. So we are a little late but uh, better late than ever, never. So what we was doing last time was uh, making these trees and uh, we keep on doing that. Our, I was trying today in the kids workshop to make a build on the doll castle. I am making together with her, but she's a little too young to understand uh, a lot of this stuff. So, you know, you have to. One moment she need to go to the toilet, the next moment she wants some colors to paint with and so on. And then she wants something to eat, and then she, and you know, it demands a skilled, skilled uh, host to to work together with children when you do things like that. So. The only thing we get got done was uh, cutting, sawing the roof out. So that was not a bit a big thing. We need to have fun together, and that's the most important thing. So, she's a little too young still. We love our grandkids, and that's what's matter. So, Brother is nine years old. He um is 
much easier with him because he does understand what's going on. Easier, easier to explain to a nine-year-old than it is to a six-year-old. <coughs> Need some coffee tonight. It was very 
late before I got to bed or should we say early because it was morning before I got to bed and then I only got a couple of hours oops <coughs> sorry It takes four and a half hours to upload and process the video when I'm finished. up out in the highlight this was better I forgot to move it
you see if these wires are enough to hold it or we have to put some sticks in Very soon we have, at least in this country, we have Easter vacation. So then <coughs> there's time to relax. And get out and get some pictures and so on. some good eating and what not. And maybe a little drink or two. years ago we had Easter vacation in Sweden and the weather was just like summer. That was crazy good. You don't get all the time. <coughs> but it would be nice if if
Ja, oh. Wie er ab. But maybe we could hear on a little tech stuff as long as we are making this. And I know this guy have any have nothing against it so It's Twit Live with Leo Laporte. Remember that meeting yeah. room in the first Star Wars movie where he raised his hand and the guy started choking to death? <laughs> that was the previous. <laughs> That's how it worked. Yeah. Hey, I don't like these icons. <laughs> I fought yeah. your face. Anyone else don't like the icons? That's, that's, that's if you were acknowledged at all. Yeah. Like, just well, that would, have been, that would have been the internal pretty reaction. Pretty popular. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody in the chat says they need an eight. But there's a new plus pack for Windows 10. They're going to call then it. Then we can pack. learn. Yeah. And uh, everything you don't like about Windows 10. It will just make it look like Windows 7. Yeah. That's yeah. what they want. We uh, Many of us. <coughs> yeah. XP. XP is where or it's XP. at. Yeah. Major zero. <laughs> if, what is a sensor core base? Who cares, Leo? This doesn't even matter anymore. This is so minor. So minor today. Actually, uh, here, let me, let me tell you this. This is available in your 635, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. There's a motion data settings app. And in old versions of the OS, 
or in old versions of the settings app, I guess, it would just be on or off. And, and if you if you put it on, you could use apps like Microsoft Health and Fitness that would let your phone work like a fitness device. It would track your movements, and it would report that data to the app, and then the app could do what you know, like what fitness apps do with that data. Um, in the new version of it, it actually supplies a lot more information. In fact, you can go right to the app itself, and you can see uh, where you've been over time, and, and it gives you graphs of the data and so forth. And it provides a lot more information to those apps, so it's a more powerful system than they used to have. Um, in fact, I meant to check this since I went to Colorado, because I, I had this thing on the whole time I was away. I didn't notice that you moved. That's what I'm wondering, yeah. And to look. It'll just take me 20 minutes to worry about it. Well, you know, while uh, you're looking, no, I, I got something. Let's take a break. Okay. When, um, when in doubt, do an ad. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> no, you're talking about something else, I'm sure. No, it does a map. It gives you a map, and so oh. you can actually see it. Now we are making an ad, so I don't know if that is allowed, so, but I know he have nothing against us playing his broadcast while working. And if you are into tech, then I think that's the best place around in my opinion of course others may have another one what I have followed Leo for years. Fifteen years or something like that. That's a good place to get a little knowledge about technology and what's up and what's new and they have a daily news uh, TNT TN <coughs> sorry TNT uh, tech news tonight every day and they have something they call TNT2 it's a later tech news program I think <coughs> Leo Laporte was Twit, and Twit was the first uh, or at least one of the first that made Netcast ASIC as they call it like we do here and live stream on the net where uh, 
and his name, the name Twit, he had before Twitter. So. He's not copying Twitter, but uh, Twitter is kind of copying him, even if they say they don't. But Twit was re registered before. Twitter. Uh, what? Twitter is a different thing, so. And they use the best tech journalists around, those who have the stories. They are not just. Uh, they use Andy Anako and Mike Elgin, our uh, uh, news director, and some of you may know him from the Google Plus. Really good. He is. And Alex Lindsay, they often have in break, Mac Break Weekly. And Alex Lindsay is a guy who knows everything there is to know about streaming and videos. So, and then they have. Uh, Steve Gibson oh, uh, really knowledge guy about security once a week they have him on And uh, entertaining guy also. Even that you have to have your propeller hat on when he is going along explaining how security works. Uh, how to make you safe. <clears throat> he always explains in great details how stuff actually works. <clears throat> and he have, of course, Steve Gibson is the guy where when you your hard drive dies or at least in some cases when your hard drive dies uh, if anything can recover it then it's spin right and that's the program Steve Gibson have made he have a deep knowledge of how hard life works. And then they have uh, this week in Google with uh, Jeff Jarvis, a professor, uh, 
journalist professor, professor and where they yeah really talk about everything uh, around Google and what else there is on their mind and Dina Zepani who had made think up what they have a lot of different pro programs to watch and listen to Leo is the guy who have it. He's a guy with uh, years and years of experience in tech radio. And in the weekend he has something called the Tech Guy, a radio show on a lot of radio stations but you can listen in live on Twit TV lot of interesting stuff going around going around going on I mean, <coughs> oops. Well, you're slowly slitting your wrists in line. Yeah, yeah. Don't. What we are listening to now is Windows Weekly with Paul Torat. Yeah. Who is a smart Windows guy? Is it done kind of? It probably is done kind of similarly. I don't really know who the other guy is. What is Paul? Amazon's Power doing stores. Google's doing stores. Tarot and uh, Leo Laporte and then uh, another guy. Apple used to do stores in Best Buy where they pay, basically pay for the space. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the store within a store thing. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Um, Google's doing a store within a store in the uh, in the uh, Currys in London. I yeah. reading well, that. I think the I guy mean, is from TechCrunch. I think. Yes, that's, that's, like, that's like saying, hey, you've got a really nice... Um, Cesspit, we'd like to set up. <laughs> yeah, it's a moat. I noticed uh, there's a mammoth yeah. slowly dying in the yeah. oil pool over there. Um, 
And did you do the Microsoft Band Field Guide? Did you do that, Paul? I did. Yep. Nice. In your spare time in between books? Yep. Where can we find that? Uh, fieldguidebooks.com So this is really going to become your brand here. I like the, I really like the name, Field Guide. I need to fix the web. The website's still the old, you know, the Windows 8 one website. Right. But, uh, if I look around, will I find it? It's right there. It's oh, the top. It's right there. Top. Free, it's in PDF, Moby, or EPUB. <laughs> Yep. Nice. Yep. Nice. How long is it? Let's find out. It's not that long. It's like 75. Compatible Raphael. Raphael. Yep. Do I have to contact him? Please do not steal my book. That's nice. What do you, I'm sorry, Peter. What do you need from Raphael? Wow, nothing. It's like, it's <laughs> nothing? Like, <laughs> like it says nothing. Like, says contact Raphael. Raphael. It's like, yeah, I don't know. So this is um, this is the kind of like the manual should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. So you still recommend it? I use it. I mean, I. You, you know, it's, know, it's a lot of untapped potential. I mean, I, I think the big thing I'd say about Microsoft Band is, it is a data collecting monster. It does so much data collection, and there just isn't a lot in the way of proactive stuff. You know the. You have you need it's been an hour you need to get up for a minute or it's been five hours you haven't exercised at all today you want to go for a walk you know it doesn't do that stuff it, it has the capability and I think it will get there but um, it has some awesome hmm. exercise stuff uh, you know vertical activity things for, you know for running and for um, cycling and all that kind of stuff um, a lot of stuff going on there but uh, I, you know it's only going to get better and it's you know by the standards of these kinds of devices. It's a lot more powerful than devices that cost the same, and it's a lot less yeah. expensive than devices that kind of approach its functionality. So what I, what I will say, it blows me away for a version one Microsoft product. Yeah. Um, yep. And apparently, you know, apparently the, the the sort of development cycle was kind of reasonable, um, but it's a really solid, competitively priced, capable device if you care about fitness bands. Which yeah. I obviously don't. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> and it works with everything, by the way. That's the other like, thing. Uh, it works with yeah. every device. Um, like, but for, for, yeah, for, for version one, it's really encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> Paul calls this another installment in our uh, ongoing <laughs> oh, oh, series. Microsoft. Oh, Microsoft. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, yep. Cortana's coming to iOS and Android. Reportedly, actually, and Peter Bright's the one who reported this. I like him. He writes. Oh, for, is it? Okay. Ours I was gonna say, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Microsoft. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, well, you know, it's funny because Google's on uh, on all platforms too. Well, not no. Sorry. It's on uh, Android uh, and iOS. Uh, but uh, and I do think the effect of this folks who did Siri, I think, are doing a new Siri for iOS. So there's. A lot of ways to do this nuance is uh, speech capability, you know. So everybody, everybody and their brothers trying to do this. It's the thing is, when it's built into the OS, that's the one you're going to use because it's just kind of right. You know, what's it talking about? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like on, on Android, the, the hooks are probably there that like Cortana on Android uh, is just as kind yeah, of capable. Yeah, I bet, I bet you. Yeah, app. yeah. But I bet they're not on on, on iOS. Oh, absolutely like, not. For Google now, problem. you have to actually launch the Google app. And then yeah. you can use it. Yeah. You know, so... I just... It's, I, I just don't see what the win is here. What, what's the upside? Right. <coughs> I think that confused uh, stutter step there is exactly the response everyone has to this. That this kind of thing. Not just this, but, you know, it's like... Eh, really let, let me fun. propose a, a thought. People will try it and go, Hey, this is really a, a different... Which it is. A better experience. Yeah. <laughs> So what? So maybe yeah, I'll get a Windows so phone. Far, so what? It's a better experience, but I've got it on my iPhone. I've got it right, on my yeah. Android phone. Right. So hey, I'm happy. This is. Uh, we understand why Nokia puts hair maps on Android, right? We get it. We know why. Yeah, because there's so many of those phones. Everyone on the phone is going to use uh, Google Maps. Every single one of them, right? So people may download it. They may try it. They may even like it, but they just they're going to use Google, right? They just are. You know, it, it's not a reflection. On here, maps, which has its pros and cons. Offline maps, for example, which is a neat feature, which Google will eventually really have, and then it will just be over. I don't know. Like I just, you know, 
Google's doing something okay. interesting. They have an API. I don't know what Cortana does, but Google's putting out an API now for third-party apps to integrate into the now cards, and presumably that'll add sure. to the speech. So you can have your, um, you know, tap on any it, app. There, kind yeah, of stuff. you know, yeah. I could have a Twit app that would actually put up a Google Now card that yeah. says, you know, Windows Weekly is about to start. In the Twitter. box is so important, you know, yeah. and it's not just in the box on Google. I mean, you use Google Maps on your PC or whatever you have, and and. You sign up with your Google account, and your maps are all there, and your directions are all there. It just kind of works, and that's how people do things. Yeah. And I did, you know, Cortana is great. I'm not. There's no issue I'm, I'm pointing at with it. It's just I don't think it. You know, it's they're going to see Microsoft, and they're going to, you know, most people aren't going to bother. Why would they? Right. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, even if they do, they're <coughs> a free service. Um, yeah, they like. Uh, uh, like yes, you can get Cortana to do a, a Bing web search, and yes, that will show you like ads, and monetized results. Yeah. But all the good stuff of Cortana, like you know the stuff like showing you sports scores or telling you, hey, it's time to leave for the airport or your plane is late or you know all of that side of things is free. But you know, there's no ads that right. show. Um, there's no you know Cortana uh, set a reminder for such and such. That's that's not monetized in any way, so yep. even if people really get into it and really use it a lot, what's the point? What 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 are they getting? Yeah, they're getting. Well, so we're losing money every time we sell a Windows data. phone. I mean, what happens if we do sell more of these things? <laughs> like, what? Lose more you know, Is that really yeah. open? Um, we're going to uh, yeah. take a break. We're going to do your top of the uh, top of the heap, the back of the book. Uh, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere segment coming up in just a little bit. But first, a word from HipChat, our wonderful sponsors. Let it cool down a little. Oh. We don't. End up pulling everything off again. Peter Bright was the other guy. The rot. Time for the back of the book. People have already started uh, playing with 10,041, the new build of Windows 10. Yep. Uh, somebody's saying the Defender icon is on the taskbar now. Um, Stop the press. It's <laughs> the updates <laughs> are radically <falling> in. <laughs> Oh my! Old apps are disappearing. New <laughs> ones are being added. <laughs> the icons are thinner. Yes. I do say. <laughs> I say so. <laughs> I say. I have a. I have the vapor. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my fainting couch? <laughs> do you have Paul Thorat a pick of any kind? Any kind I do, at all? I do. I do. Okay. 
So my tip of the week is actually, you may recall some, some time ago, months ago, I recommended that people uh, put a music drive in their OneDrive and start copying music into it because at the very least you could sync that music from PC to PC if you wanted to. But then Microsoft was planning to update Xbox Music to support that and that support happened today. So if you're like me and you had done this months ago, that music is just available now for free in Xbox music. Oh, that's nice. It doesn't require an Xbox Music Pass. You can stream it over the web. You can download it to your devices from anywhere. It's, it's yeah. So, um, uh, if you haven't done it, uh, Microsoft has added a music folder to your Xbox, uh, to your OneDrive, and so you can do it that way. And so I wrote that up. That just, just happened today, so that's kind of a neat thing. And then the software pick is um, OneNote Clipper, which is something I have um, uh, recommended in the past. It's a, it's a I think it's a bookmarklet, is it the right term, on IE. But on Chrome, it's a full-blown add-in, and it's a little more powerful on Chrome. But they've thoroughly a little it. down here, so. Um, uh, beautiful new UI. You can choose I bet clip, I can where reach. The, clip, you know, the web clipping goes. Um, like through, we're using a location uh, clipper. But it also has kind of a neat um, capability to natively support articles, recipes, and products. And so if you're looking at an article and you clip it, and you say this is an article, it will just clip the you know the text and the graphics. It won't get any of the ads and the surrounding baloney. Um, and so it's just become a lot more powerful. It's a really neat way uh, from the web to clip stuff, if you or you know copy and paste it basically from the web into your into your OneNote notebooks. <sighs> so this is just an awesome awesome app yeah. that's gotten a lot better. You're all OneNote all the time. I think. That's me, Mr. One. Yeah, one note and word in my office. Yeah. Yeah. I always spend a lot of my day. Peter Bright, did you yeah. bring along anything to share with the class? Um, I was going to do uh, a comedy bear option. A comedy bear option. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There, you know, that's uh, there's there's always room for beer. There's always the, the bear of the week. And I was going to... Yes. Um... Do a, 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 a good. So I've been uh, drinking a lot of tea recently. <laughs> from a from a from a company called I think it's Adagio.com. Oh, I love Adagio they, tea. Yes. Yeah, they deliver the tea and they have this Earl Grey Bravo. It's called. Oh, and see, I don't like the bergamot. I could do without the bergamot. Oh, it's 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 orgasmic, Leo. It's what is it about sick. bergamot? I don't understand. I I don't know. It's it's I I think it just it's it's great and um. A few weeks ago, we got a Mr. Coffee iced tea maker. <laughs> and it sounds like a contradiction in terms. Yeah, I know. It <laughs> doesn't make coffee strangely. Um, and I, I make this Earl Grey iced tea, and it's just delicious. Um, so that's my, my recommendation. Paul, <coughs> you like the Earl Grey? No, I drink green tea, and I also rake, oh. I, don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but like rooibos tea. It's oh, like a roi, red tea. yeah, rooibos. Like yeah, it's, a red, it's not even a tea, it's a red tree. Yeah, it's not even tea. That's, yeah, it's that's, a tree bark or something. Yeah, yeah that's good. There's that, a, is, that is the exact thing we have. Yes. Mr. Coffee Ice Tea Maker. Wait a minute, tell me, how, how could this work? You put water in, it heats it up. Put water in it, it heats it up, yeah. and then pours it over ice. And, and where's the tea? Where does the tea live? So you see the bit in the top? Yeah. The bit that sort of swivels around, you put tea in that. You see, look, it's oh, got yeah, a basket go. like the Mr. Coffee yeah. for coffee. Right. But is that enough time to steep? Yeah, it, it trickles the water through quite slowly. Okay, so um, it's, it's, it's getting its four minutes of, uh, of, of 200 degree water yeah, yeah, steeping. Yeah. It's good. And it really is good. It's steeping. Yeah. yeah. And, it, right. and, it's very, and it's just very convenient because you... Up with a little <laughs> and you think, and you want to recommend a Daggio Tees, uh, Earl Grey? Grey, yeah. Um, this is uh, Mary Jo, come back fast. <laughs> well, I do, I have a beer, I do have a beer slot. This guy is yes, recommending El, El, tea. El, El, El Grey Bravo. He is British, it's, you know, it's, it's not his fault. It's black, the third one alone. I like Irish breakfast tea. That, I like a black, a good, dark they good and strong. Yeah. Earl Grey Bravo. Oh, I yeah. see. Looks like it has little pieces of potato chips in it. What is that? It's orange <laughs> fruit. Ah. Oh, see, that would be all right. Please. That would kind of... That would be all right. Please that, be that. Yeah. 
Orange peel and uh, and then what is the blue thing? I guess uh, stuff. I don't know. That was maybe the, maybe just a lilac Magic. thrown yeah, in there. Yeah, it's, but and, it's uh, really tasty. Oh, yeah. it's, it's By the way, they good. the good thing about Adagio, they do have steeping instructions. Steep yes. at two twelve, but boiling for two to three minutes. And, and you can also get like small, um, really small sort of portions, sample portions of yeah. two bucks, and buy. A bunch of different flavors. Try them, yeah. And I recommend it, yeah. You know, maybe yeah. I'll give Earl Grey another try because all I've had is like the, you know, the crappy Twinings. I, I haven't, I haven't tried their other Earl Grey. I have to say they've got the lavender got Earl Grey. Sounds things. interesting. Yes. Um, <laughs> and we have to try them. <laughs> We're trying to drive Paul off. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> tea is good. I should drink more. I feel I should drink more tea and less coffee can't really do both because coffee will ruin your palate for tea yeah you'll say what is this weak brown water i don't do you have anything sure. stronger uh, well you know but, you know it's a, it, it's it, it dries you out the wall you go to a restaurant and you, you ask for iced tea and they give it's it's got so much damn ice in it yeah it's just watered down and has no real taste yeah. I, I like my tea to pack a punch me too yeah, yeah. so the mr coffee iced that's, tea that's maker so does American, that. you know yeah okay. yeah yeah we have something even worse in Houston. You probably get a sweet tea. Ugh. Yeah, that is that is the default. That'll, and that's, that'll put your teeth. It's great if you want. It's great if you want diabetes. Yeah. It's, 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 ah. Need a couple of glasses and boom. Like take that, take that pancreas. <laughs> I don't suck need you, insulin pancreas. Uh, yeah. Suck it. Uh, a Dajo tea is very good. Highly recommended. I think yeah. you're great. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Paul, you're done. <coughs> so I guess what we should do is beer, because I have this yeah, flavor. Yeah, quickly. You know, I was in I was in Fort Collins, Boulder area last week, Ouch. And, uh, which is the beer capital of the world. Sorry, Belgium. And there are an amazing range of breweries there. I didn't go any place new. I just went to my favorites. You know, Avery, New Belgium, primarily. Uh, new Belgium has a series of beers called the Lips of Faith. What? And they're big, they're sour. They're, they're all sours basically. The lips they, of oops. faith. Oops. Yeah. So we did a Lips of Faith uh, flight, which was like nine different beers, and uh, most of which I hadn't had before. They changed, you know, from time to time, and uh, there were some cra crazy ones. There was one called Malay, where it was uh, like a chili beer, which sounds like it'd be terrible, but it was awesome. Um, if you're at, if you're ever in a place where you can get any Lips of Faith beer, uh, pr which probably means primarily out west somewhere, uh, definitely check this stuff out. And if you live in Colorado, God bless you. You live on. What, on what characterizes the lips of faith beer? They're sours. They're sours. Okay. Yeah. But they they really span a range. I mean, there's some of them that are sort of like uh, basically hefeweizens. There are some that are, you know, dark stoutish kind of beers. I mean, they really. Uh, this is kind of their chance to go a little crazy. I think this is what they're doing. Far out. Yeah, you know, really I uh, I made because uh, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I made a a, uh, a corned beef and cabbage, of course. Of course. Of course. And I did it in the slow cooker, so I started in the morning yesterday. And I decided to put beer in it, cook it in beer instead of water, which makes it quite tasty. But I might have overdid it, because I got a fancy Belgian triple. And I, yeah. I cooked it in that. Really? And, you cooked uh, a triple? I kind of a waste of a triple. Like a 750 milliliter bottle of a triple. Yeah. But it was good. And then today I had corned beef hash. Oh, that was really good. But I say I bought. So Lisa, I said, get give me a Belgian triple. She she bought two. So I had some golden drock, undrunk golden drock. So come over, and we'll have a little uh, triple. Nice. Party. Yeah. I will. Yes. Yum yum yum. Did not turn out mushy. Thank you very much, Doctor Mom. Said you can't do that. Oh <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Hey, we do uh, Windows Weekly uh, every Wednesday. It's kind of the uh, fun day, hump day uh, show at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And a, and a word of warning to those of you uh, in countries where you have not entered summertime or safe daylight time or your time hasn't changed, we did. And so uh, we are at 1800 UTC, so you'll have to do your math. We moved, in other words. Daily savings time is the best, isn't it? You know, because everything was just going great, so let's screw up the schedule. Oh, and everybody's you know, we can see the sun in the morning money. instead of the big Every blood. year, several people die because of it. It's terrible. I yeah. love daylight savings. Yeah, but stay in it. 
Great yeah. people time from That's what I mean. Back. I mean the switch armor. It's the change that makes you crazy. Just well, stay, pick one and <coughs> So I didn't even know. Oh, you were stuff. screwed up anyway, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. like... That's an uh, ideal time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like imposing jet lag on an entire nation. That has yeah, exactly. Without the travel. Jet lag without the benefit of yeah. the photos you took on your vacation. Yeah. Mr. Uh, really? Mr. Dr. Pizza, thank you for being here. <laughs> the pleasure is always. Is there a Dr. Pizza iced tea maker? That would be good. Uh, uh, no. No. be at Dr. Pizza on the Twitter, you'll find him on Ars Technica as one of the great... Ars, you know, Ars Technica. If I had to pick one uh, well. online publication besides therot.com that I read just and I, and I really feel is so trustworthy and, and it's Ars Technica Dan, with Dan Gooden. you got a great team over there. <laughs> we do. Please say hi to them and say if you ever wish to work more with Twit, we would love to do that. I just think it's the quality yeah. I'm uh, with him. platform. Yeah. Well, good. Dr. Pete's will be back. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. P. Oh, no, that's bad. <laughs> wow. Sounds like Thanks, you're Leah. a urologist. I'm sorry. Don't uh, see urine. <laughs> we'll inspect your wiener now. No, thank now. you. Great. That's not what I want. Uh, Dr. P and Mr. T, it's been a great show. <laughs> Mr. Therod is at therod.com. That's his new home on the net. Please go there. Two uh, U's, a T, an R, and an O. <laughs> Three T. Wait a minute. T H U R R O T T. Three T's, two R's, a U and an O. That's how you spell. It. And remember, the U. I like to use the number four instead of the letter A. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. And we'll see y'all next time on Windows Weekly. You know, I can stream Beatles songs that I own. Because you own Xbox Music now. Yeah. Just like a grown-up music service. Just like a real music service. You could do ACDC, Metallica. Yeah. Get yeah, crazy. In there. I literally have stocked this thing full of music that is not an Xbox Music. stream, media. right. Yep. And That's a great works. way to do it, yeah. That's course, amazing. Google Music and Amazon have been doing that for I, a Listen, I, Leo, Leo, here's my response to that. No, 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 no. Everybody. You know what, Xbox Music was... Thirty-one dollars and forty-one cents. I know on Pi Day, wasn't that great? Of Xbox Music Pass. That was great. So that's, that's why Microsoft sent me two pies. Three, that's one third the price of Spotify. Why? Why are you? Why are you getting pies? I don't get pies. Microsoft brought me two pies, pies, a Cortana and lunchbox, a and a phone. What, what kind of pies? Well, the pies good. What they were fabulous. Good? One was a uh, lemon chess. The other was an apple pie with crisscross crust from some fancy pie company in San Francisco. They the were hell? fabulous. I know. And you're Microsoft, the Windows where's my, guy. Where is my, where is my pie? Hold, you get if pie. I get a pie from Microsoft, it's going to be like a pie in the face when I'm walking out the door. Yeah. And they, but they wanted me to plug, the and I did. I, 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 I probably broke some federal law, but they wanted me to mention this $31, uh, 14, 41 cents uh, right. price. Oh, so I did. I mean, that's a great bribe, deal. Bribery pie. Oh, I see. Oh, it was bribery yeah, I'll, pie. I'll accept, I'll accept those. They all said, like, some Einstein brain game. They had some pie-oriented products. <laughs> I, I I would like to, to sample pie and pie-related products. Well, I don't know. I don't understand why they would send it to me and not you. Pie, pie and pie-related products. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oops. You know, well, Amer just... Amer one of America's failings is America doesn't actually do pie very well because America, in America, pie is sweet. Right. And you will also point out nice. that our yeah. most famous pie, the Boston have, cream pie, is a cake. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. No, you're right, Dr. Pizza. In fact, I mean, just is a magnificent. Last night, we were talking about this at dinner, and somebody said they've opened an English restaurant in Petaluma. And I said, why would anyone want an English restaurant? That sounds horrible. <laughs> oh, come Meat on. Pies. Pies. That's what I said. Ridiculous. No, no, because I don't want bangers and mash. I'm sorry, but... Shepherd's pie, steak and kidney pie. Uh, pork pie is the king of pies. Pork right? pie. Yeah. I've got a hat named after that. <laughs> there are. That's how good it is. Yes. Love pork it's, pies. Someone put out. Yes, America does have the chicken pot pie. Sadly, never made with pot. The best chicken pot pie I ever had in my life. Claridge's uh, in London. 
If you get him, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Some way to go for a pie. It was a long. I'm sitting there. I'm saying. I love savory pies. I, I come from pies, America, pies. and I want some pie. Yeah, what do you call it? You have some, you have some <laughs> you have a lovely chicken pot pie. I think you'll enjoy it quite well. Yeah. Quite rare. Very good. And it was. It was the best chicken pot pie I ever yeah. had. It's incredible. <laughs> You know, like the meat pie is an English staple. But, uh, I know. Forget fish and chips. Give me meat pie. Yeah, yeah. So, which is the best? Yeah. It's the pork pie. Yeah, I think I think the pork pie is the thing I really miss in America. Like you know, pork steak pie. pie is good, and chicken pie, pie is good, and, yeah. and like you know, shep shepherd's pie. But are things, they but hand pies? The, so yeah, the pork pie is they're generally like smallish. And they're cold. They're sort of tall. And they're made with um, what's it called? Uh, Grease. Oh. It's, it's a special kind of pastry. Um, if I can lard. Um, it is. What's nice when they're cold? They're really they really uh, right. solid up. They're like yeah. So that so they're, they're they're made with hot water crust pastry, which uh -huh. is quite it's very short and lardy. Um, so lardy. the pastry is kind of. Not flaky, but crumbly. Substan. Oh yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, but, but, but dense. Dense. Um, and they're filled with um, like chopped pork pressed into a, a, a like a lump of pork. I mean, how can you go wrong with a lump of pork? Really, you can't. Oh, nothing like it. Unless it it's is meat of king. So that's the internet video says. Lovely. Um, and yeah, so they're they're, they're eaten cold. And in the hand. <coughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's sort of... We have you have to come to Petaluma because we do have the Petaluma Pie Company, and they do make a, I think, a very yeah, nice hand pie. Yeah. Well, anyway, they make them yeah, out of. I, I would suggest you, 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 you know, oh. if you're in the UK, investigate pork pies. The worst pies in London. <laughs> they.
Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ring Central, the business phone system that's in the cloud. Ring Central now integrates with Google for work. Try Ring Central with a 30 day risk free trial at ringcentral.com or call 800 543 9980. Use the promo code TWIT. And by Zip Recruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 50 plus. And by Zip Recruiter. Are you hiring? With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 50 plus job sites, including social networks, all with a single click. Screen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs>
and he, um, an old hippie, and he actually read the newspapers on the air <laughs> in his in his dressing gown. That, I'm telling you, this was killer content. I'm going to do that on Meerkat, actually. That's so funny that you should say that. He that, had them all open in front of him, all the major newspapers, and he was in his dressing gown. That's why I brought would, the New York Times. I was going to read the, the paper and he would flip, Meerkat. He would flip through the papers and say, hmm, so here, here's the an paper article. says this, and then this other paper says this. And he was basically... That's you great. know, analyzing the news in real time in his dressing gown. That's awesome. I thought it was great. Only in Canada. Awesome service. Leo, I, I missed the explanation earlier. The bow ties because nothing. I just my new look. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. I decided to go retro because it's snappy. It's kind of a Charles Osgood S- thing going on here. Snappy. Right now. I'm going to read the paper. <laughs> Disruptors: The future of TV. See, this always gets me. They have these conferences. Who's doing this one? Uh, the Silicon Valley, that's the Computer History Museum. The future of TV. And then who do they have on here? Nobody I ever heard of. <laughs> who are they? R- Roger Lynch? Uh, oh, no. CEO of Sling TV. Okay. Sling TV. Okay, that's good. All right. Nice Jill Soloway, creator of Transparent. That's not the future of TV, I hate to tell you, but okay. And, uh, oh, CEO Vimeo. They're back in the laptop. It's a very intimate uh, connection. How's that? <laughs> Trying to match Jeff's head. It's good. We don't normally see you in such uh, sunny circumstances. And they're back in the laptop. It's a very intimate uh, connection. How's that? Trying to match Jeff's head. It's good. That we don't normally see you in such uh, sunny circumstances. Yeah, I'm at a friend's uh, place up north, actually. Nice. You, you, Matthew, everywhere you are is up north. <laughs> <laughs> True enough. Fair enough. Anyway, we're so, I'm so glad to see you and talk to you. And uh, just sh- it was such a shock, as I'm sure it was to you. Cool. Yeah, uh, it and, was actually. Yeah. People, keep, people keep wondering whether me saying it was a shock is just being polite. Or, you know, whether we knew sort of behind the scenes. And so, the you know, on the record, the story is uh, it was a shock. And off the record, the story is it was a shock. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we had no clue. No clue. Maybe and, I should have had. I feel like kind of a chump now. You know, maybe I should have figured it out. But Well, unless they're, like, asking you to turn off the lights in the, in the right. office, you know, early uh, or something like that. How would you know? There was you know? nothing. There was nothing. Yeah. There were... email saying you need to be on the phone in an hour or two god. and then it was you know oh my god clean out your in, that, in that hour or two were there were there rumblings in the staff of what this this is about or what yes yeah there was a Must rumor count. yeah and so but oh, but then everybody said well that can't be true like that's ridiculous we're doing fine. <laughs> well, when you have a four hundred thousand dollar a month nut. Yeah, there's some debate about that figure, but I, yeah. I honestly don't know. That's tough to cover. I mean, just but but uh, fifty million equity mm-hmm. in debt. <whistles> Man. Oh, was that the number? Uh, well, was well, that oh, the end debt, right? Oh, oh, they took yeah because they had taken. 50. They had there taken was, 40 million in uh, venture capital. Yeah, that's right. And then somewhere between 5 and 10 million in debt. I see. See, the debt I did not know about. Yeah, if you and knew I, about the debt, I, then you would be going, oh, gee, I, that's a lot. Because debt is a red flag. Right. I remember when Foursquare all of a sudden did a debt issue yeah. after doing a bunch of equity issues. I, It was like, whoa! You should wait, be borrowing money if you've got forty million in venture. Well, capital. some of that debt. Well, and you have no. If you're not profitable, 
there's no like you know there's no how do you service it you can't service how do you, your, you service your debt exactly yeah. you you're basically betting right. you're rolling the wheel um, and yeah. betting that you can somehow get to a point where you can service that that debt how would see uh, sometimes see if you Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, I'm assuming he had equity the same way right. we all did, and right. and what what happens to that? I don't, don't know. I mean, if there's anything left after, well, it's not. Yeah, right. Real creditors get the money first. So. Right. Right. It's just so sad. Well, you know, it was a a sort of. A brief shining moment. And yeah. Super quality. Quality. You know, I, I enjoyed it. One thing that uh, everybody said, and it was really, really true, is that uh, the voice of Giga Ohm was so authoritative and effective and reliable and, and not really clickbaity. Not clickbaity. And I don't think that is. I'm glad we never sort of went down that yeah. road. I mean, I'm yeah, better to pull the plug than do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I do, I will say though, if someone had asked me whether we would go under. First, or Pando Daily would go under first. <laughs> I, would have, I would not have picked up. So. Oh, and that's there were some. Ways he's coming after you. Yeah, there were some negative. Uh, uh, oh, all right. I don't want to go into it. Um. Okay. We're starting. Oh, like, so I think yeah. So I think I'm. Good. Let's check. Ads. Let me switch over to that right place here. Okay, so there. Oh, they, there we go. Uh, smart thing. Uh, right. Smart thing. Twit 10. Not say Twit 10 on this. Yes. Let's, let me take a look. Right. No, that has changed. Thank okay. you. Uh, Tomorrow to build a studio about half a million. We paid that off in two years. Already? Jeez. Oh yeah, we paid. Lisa's very good with this stuff. Uh, uh. Yeah, we could have used someone like that. You know. Not never to short the, sell the value of somebody who knows what they're doing with, like, mm -hmm. like cash. the nuts and bolts, the cash. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, the reason Lisa is here, because my accountant said, you're going to go to jail because your books are so <laughs> screwed up. So I, I need to hire, you need to hire somebody who yeah. basically fixes books, who fixes them up, who goes back, adjusts it, and makes it all good. And so that's how we met Lisa, because that's what she did. She had an accountant, uh, accountancy firm that would come in and then would, would, would you know, clean up all this mess. Yeah, it's so important. And then, and I mean, you know, I can't, I couldn't organize a kid's birthday no, party. No, I can't do it. I can't keep track of no. my own spending alone. Yeah. I can't do it. But uh, she's very, in that's what, and so then we said, well, we need, obviously need a CFO. And we didn't think she would want to do it because she had her own business and I said that you have is there anybody you know that you think would be good for this she said I'll do it I said really are you sure she said yeah uh, part time she was at first part time but there's no way this would be successful without or, or, or look like it does without her you have to have, but, but, the, but I did have enough discipline never to spend money we didn't have yeah, and to kind well, of be prudent about you know our run rate, 
and I, I think we, you know, I, I said that in the thing I wrote that the model that Danny Sullivan had as or that you know tech bird had as kind of micro that, micro right to to, to grow grow slowly and to not get ahead of yourself and to only spend what you have is is by far the the more sensible model but if you want to build something big right it takes a really long time and you may never get there That's yeah money up fast. I don't even know if it's yeah, that cool. you had good inv- you had smart good investors who knew what they were buying into and probably didn't expect vice or, or uh, BuzzFeed sure. style growth uh, and it but but the problem is the creditors, not the not the VCs. But to some yeah, extent, I think it's a bit the, of a, yeah, it's a bit of both. I mean, the, the investors were the creditors at the end. They were they were right. tied in over. Yeah. Oh, I see. All right. I thought it was the Bank of Silicon Valley that really put it. Well, and and the, they were part of it. Yeah. Um, they've they've said kind of through channels that you know they did not. Hold the plug, oh, and they didn't. Oh. That that they, you know, they love entrepreneurs and all that. But at some point, the board and creditors right. and all those groups decided <clears throat> we just can't. The gap is too wide. Right. And we don't have enough time. Or yeah, I, I had to be part of the, one of those at, at, at Plastic.com, mm-hmm. which was um, Stephen Johnson and the folks from Sock and other ones that come together, Joey uh, uh, of, and uh, you know, at one point we just said uh, Bo Peabody was on the board with me and we just looked at it and said uh, nope, not working it hurts and I mean for a venture for back company, eight years is a life that's forever you know? yeah yeah, yeah. we're ten years, we celebrate our 10th anniversary next month wow, but there's no pressure awesome. And really, the only pressure was, is this a lifestyle business? Or, I mean, what is this? Yeah. And I don't even... I, but nobody said you have to decide. I, so I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> some days it's a some days it's a startup. Some days it's a business. Some days is this a lifestyle business. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Well, hey, if it's working. It's fun. That's all. That. Well, I'd like it to continue. I don't want it to just kind of say, okay, we're done in 10 years. No, you built something amazing fold it up but I think we probably will because I don't think there's any prospect of I don't I don't know as long as you still enjoy doing it well yeah but that's the problem I'm 58 so 10 years right right I don't, I don't know I, I am looking much, much more older and distinguished Get it's me. the bow tie I'm going to become Andy Rooney at some point Oh no! <laughs> Don't you hate you it when you go? Oh, oh, I am a mouse. Oh, called a mouse. Another iPhone. <laughs> when they cut the wireless mouse off, I don't know what you do with it. Does it have a tail? I made millions of dollars a year. Millions of dollars. <laughs> oh, I I hate it. When I was TV critic, I hated him. Hated him. I Everybody love him, did. and I like Charles Osgood too. I love that style of folksy. Ugh. And another thing. And another thing. It's it's just a Seinfeld for old people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't right. don't tell me you like um, Garrison Keillor too. You know, I loved him for a long time, but the stick the stick did wear a yeah, little after a while. It does grow tiresome. Yeah. After a while. And then the. Uh, uh, I've got a, a out a little before 7 p.m. Oh, my God. Time. Okay, we better get going here. We no, but I think we're, we're fine, but I just want to... <sighs> That's got all the ads figured out? Yeah, I got them. Twit, tweak, tweak. Yep. It's time for This Week in Google, the show that uh, is all about the cloud, the Googleverse, and uh, all of the above. Anything we want to talk about, because when you have Professor Jeff Jarvis here, the uh, City University of New York, Dr. Jarvis... To no, his no, friends. No doctor. No doctor. <laughs> not, even, not even master. <laughs> D-O-C-K-T-E-R. We love having him on. Uh, and uh, a, a head of a 
preceded the dissolution, dissolution of uh, the desolation of Giga Home. But you're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yep. Still here. Well, we just think the world of you. We think actually the world of everybody at Giga Home. That was a terrible yeah. loss. We talked about Thanks. it. It happened uh, while we were doing the show, I think. Wow. I think so, didn't it? Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, great to have you, Matthew, and and, and uh, just want to have your continued co- uh, contribution. You're not going back to the print. Uh, no, I don't think so. That's what everybody wrote about you was how Matthew Ingram boldly made the decision to go from a print newspaper, the Globe and Mail, right? Yeah. Which is Toronto's greatest newspaper. Um, actually, mm. Canada's greatest newspaper, but, but the Toronto uh, Metro, one of two. And Toronto has two papers. Three. Three? It's got three, yeah. How'd that happen? Anyway, you go. Paper. Yeah. I, and tr- the Globe and Mail love reading it, uh, but you decided to go, uh, to go to uh, go digital. When did you do that? Mm. Uh, 2010, January 2010. Was there an internet then? <laughs> <laughs> there was. Yeah. And you, so you, Giga Home was your uh, was your first gig, so to speak. Digital. It gig. was. Yeah. yeah. I worked for the the digital sort of unit of the newspaper. Right. For a few years, and and then uh, yeah, then made the jump to digital only. But not back to not no ink anymore. Um, I'm sort of. Reviewing a right. number of options, but I would not go back to just yeah. to just print them. No. Have you uh, you all stayed in touch with one another, Kevin and uh, Jan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we still talk daily. We we use Slack. Um, oh, that's neat. We we just started using that a few months ago, and we sort of got used to to just talking all the time. So we're still doing it. You know, everybody's trying to figure out what they're doing next, and so it's kind of a support group. I was also impressed. I think it was I think it was Stacy who, as soon as the announcement happened, immediately was tweeting the great talent at at, at, at uh, Giga Home, and it's really you know it's impressive to see a boss look out for her chicks uh, and look out for her colleagues before um, you know whining about yourself. Stacy Higginbottom. That was, that was, that was, that was Laura Owen, I think. Was Laura Owen. Yeah, because Stacy's one of the. Yeah, that's, right, one of the yeah. that's right, one of the chicks. Yes. I did, well, I had now. That's the bad word to say. I meant I meant oh. chicklings. I meant I meant little, little okay. birds or duck. No, no, one of the baby ducks. One of the baby ducks is what he's saying. Yeah. Probably one of the chicks. Yes. I did. Well, I had now. That's the bad word to say. I meant I meant oh. chicklings. I meant I meant little, little okay. birds or duck. No, no, one of the baby baby ducks. Baby. One of the baby ducks is what he's saying. Yeah. 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 No, we're we're pretty tight. Right, one of the chicks, yes. I did. Well, I, I had no, that's the bad word. <clears throat> I'm I'm, I'm, I'm you, you've been nice. We 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 made a shtick of it. <laughs> I've been dismissive of the Chromebook. I think and, and a lot of people still are. They say, Oh, it's just a browser pretending to be a computer. Um, but a few things have happened. Um, I'm so, That is a really bad connection too. Today, we keep it. Oh, I think it's U stream. So we will try. I can't really do anything with it. I shoot raw, so it doesn't. 
there's no point in putting a, a card in there. Although it does mount flush, which means you could use this as extra storage. You put on a 28 gig SD card in there. That's like a second hard drive. If you you know, I, I tried to go to Best Buy and Apple to buy a C to HDMI connector, and, and, and you can't get them yet. Not yet. Really? Yeah. You can get them from Google, but you can't get them. Yeah. Yeah, you get and get them online. And Apple sells a seventy-nine dollar dongle, which really is overpriced. I think so we are getting there. Accessories. That's certainly one is cheap Type C interfaces, uh, and I'm sure Monoprice will do them because it's not proprietary. It's not the MagSafe adapter. It's uh, everybody, you know, Intel, Google, and Apple all involved in Type C. It's a standard. It. So, as far as I can tell, we've I've been doing a lot of inquiries. This is a standard, standard, standard power and everything. You could, for instance, have a Type C power adapter from another manufacturer, plug it in, uh, and it would work fine. Um, even if the wattage isn't the same, uh, it will trickle charge it or fast charge it or not, you know, not use all the, all the power available. It'll work. Ain't I the right? That's needed is Steve Gibson came up with this, and if anybody wants to steal this idea and do a Kickstarter, I encourage you. He says you need a Type-C condom because there is this issue that Type-C is not just power, it's full USB data, so the bad USB hack, which means that you can use this to modify the firmware on USB drives and make them very potent malware transportation devices, um, is a potential problem here. Somebody could put a charging station in a coffee shop that would infect. Now, the good news about Chromebooks is you can't, there's nothing really to infect. In fact, right. These are very, very secure, but nonetheless, uh, certainly for the MacBook, you'll want this. It would be simple enough to make a Type-C male to female cable that just carried the power lines, not any of the oh, data. I see. And you'd carry that with you. You'd use that all the time. Then you could safely connect to anything. So that's a good market. They shouldn't be more than a buck or two. There's no special stuff in that. I'm figuring 59 bucks on from, from Apple before you know it. Yeah. By the way, it's March 18th today, Jason. Just not March. Ah, <laughs> uh, good catch. <laughs> I am really impressed with uh, the keyboard, the screen, the trackpad. Yes. Everything works the, very the well. Is, the hinge is more solid. The hinge was good before, but it's really good now. But then you don't mind the screen that it's three two. It's weird, but uh, you get used to it. And uh, yeah, no, it's fine for me. One thing that that has really improved in the Chromebook is the ability to handle different size screens. And I'll use that. At, with this, I'll use this as an example. This is a new, this came out today. This is a new Acer Chromebook with a 15 inch screen. And one of the things that's made it hard for me to recommend Chromebooks to it's the natural uh, users of Chromebooks are older people, right? Who really don't need anything more complex <laughs> than a browser and email program and things and stuff like that. Chromebooks are perfect for them. They, they just can't get in trouble with them. But the screens have been so crappy and small, it's hard to recommend it. Even I have a hard time reading it. Um, can you hide the uh, screen real quickly while I log into my This one, um, More I'll show you what I've done. I've made the, because you have 15 inches now, you can uh, make this very easy to look at. Because you now have two things you can change. You can change the standard browser zoom size, and you can change the standard text size. So it's not the small type problem of the other uh, oh. HD Chromebook? This is so easy to to, to use. Um, you see how big that, well, I'll, I can make it even bigger. You see how big it is? And on a 50 inch screen, which, you know, it's 1080p screen, potentially these could be very small. Uh, yeah. but, they, but, but they're actually quite usable, I think. So I think Google has solved a lot of the kind of little things. That and might, how much is that Acer? 300 bucks. Amazing. So I've, I've customized the fonts to be very large, but you can even go uh, more in here, you can change the kind of font. There's a lot of information there you can use to your heart's mm. content to make it legible. And then you can set the standard page, which I've set to 150% on here, just kind of as example. Now, some of these icons, some of the icons on the, can use the Chrome user interface are, are still small, but but usable. And it's not touch. It's not nearly as good a not nearly as good a screen as the Pixel. The thing that's great about the Pixel is it feels so fast. So fluid, so easy, and this isn't even the LS version. That it, that you kind of some of the kind of qualms about using a Chromebook go away. It feels like it's a real, a real computer. I put speed it, is already impressive. I, I got the LS. You did? Oh, yeah. 
Both? Okay, so the uh, Acer I mean, It's my only machine. I might as well, you know, that's what I live with. Right, so. why not? 200 bucks, 300 bucks more. The Acer um, boots in seven seconds. This thing, let me, let me just do a reboot. It feels like it's almost instant, right? Well, what's, amazing, what's so great to you, you mentioned this last week, too, is is, is the setup is nothing. Every time I have changed I machines, that. Like, oh, it was a day, I don't you this, I forgot that. that. And you turn it on and give it about four minutes, it's done. Yeah. So, uh, let's see how fast it takes to boot. I just shut it off. Just tap 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Did I tap it? No, it didn't shut off yet. It takes a second to shut off. Okay. Is it off? How do you even know? <laughs> no, no light on the front. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I love the screen back of 1,000. That's it. Hmm. Like almost instant, like four or five seconds. Yeah. Um, this is kind of fun, too. The uh, rainbow little doohickey mm -hmm. here. You double tap. and you can see how much battery life is left, which is great. So I'm 100% I'm charged. And the battery life, you haven't experienced this yet, Jeff. Nine to 12 hours, easy. Oh, really? So it's, it's, it's legit? Oh, it's legit. And same thing with this Acer, because it's so big, it's all battery in the inside. Right. That is fabulous. The These ability, are heavier than Aeros. That's the one thing. They're not, they're yeah. not, you know, just kidding. But it feels, it, you know, it feels like something, good. it's a utilitarian yeah, air. solid, square edges, you know, it's very googly googly. <laughs> I, uh, I love it. I'm very happy with it. Wow. I think you're going to like yours a lot. I didn't, I mean, I'm curious what you say with the ludicrous speed for you. The and only, there's uh, nothing, go ahead, Beth, sorry. There's nothing you want to do on a computer that you can't do on this? Yeah, there's a few things. I like to do computer programming. I can't do most kinds of computer programming. You can do App Inventor mm -hmm. and stuff like that, web-based programming, but I can't do the stuff I want. You could do a boot. You can do a boot too, or not do a boot, but but do a build. Too, I played uh, with Linux on this. I decided not to do that. The one yeah. thing I have done, I have SSH on here, um, and so the one thing I have done is I can SSH to my Linux box mm -hmm. and have a, a Linux command line easily. Right. So. Um, no, Matthew. The only thing is you don't add a video on it. You can't uh, video right. or photo. I mean, you can, but you photo you can. I mean, you don't do what Leo does with this with his raw yeah. files on photo. But for yeah. what I do, for you know, let me get a photo for a media post, easy as pie. Mm -hmm. You can also use remote desktop. So I'm going to remote desktop into my Mac Pro at home. And uh, oh, look, <laughs> you have a security pin, which I've just entered, and now I can use my uh, computer at home. Is so, it one, two, three, four? Yeah, shoot, you saw. So, so, I'm having some screen issues, but this is probably because I have a computer at home set at ridiculous screen resolution. But basically, this is, I'm, I'm, that's my computer at home, I'm looking at this screen. It's my Mac Pro. So, uh, you can, in fact, I guess, do what you want. But, um, I think if you had a, I think what you need is a desktop that can do all that stuff, and then this could be your... Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, I think when you when you get if if I had um, Google Fiber at full speed, you start to see doing video remotely. Yeah, there is a I mean, remote video plugin. Uh, you know, yeah, video exists. We video will do video editing. And listen, it's always taken time to download the video to the machine. We right. just upload it to the cloud instead, and as long as you can get response there, and and the rendering is going to be faster up in the cloud than it is going to be on a local machine. As more stuff uses HTML5, as Chrome gets more powerful, I love this little app drawer. And by the way, you get this on Windows and Mac now, too, where you have what look, I mean, as for all intents and purposes, this looks like the taskbar on Windows with all my icons here. Wash your mouth out. <laughs> well, I mean, it's or okay at the dock. Uh, you, you have a, a start button where you have, you know, these are the apps I have. I can swipe through them, which is great. Uh, and these, you know, I, you know, it's pretty much everything uh, I want. The, the speakers on this are pretty decent still. I think the old Pixel had very good speakers. Uh, these are still pretty good here. And there is a lot of, you know, image editing and even sort of oh, yeah. minor video editing that I'm you can do in the close. cloud. Yeah. You know, at some point my, my Tweet Deck app was great. You know. assumed it would be all about the bass. <laughs> oh, I can play that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that song. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I think, in general, this is, um, this is like 
percent of what most people do with their computing anyway. Yeah. A hundred percent in some cases. Huh? You know, and I was thinking. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm trying to talk to students. You're getting really, there. Um, you know, uh, those who need to do video and I didn't know, not yet, but everybody else. It's Slowly but surely. Last week in Madrid, I, I went to Prisa, the giant media company there with El País, and they have an education arm. They're doing fascinating things in Brazil with a company that um, uh, basically handles everything for a school from curriculum through uh, technology. And they, of course, because they, this is for well to do. I am simply so tired tonight. Like you wouldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense for students for sure, and and I think for older folks as well. I'm I'm thinking about my mom. You know, I got her a shitty netbook, and it's garbage. And and I'm thinking, do I get her a tablet? Should I get her a Chromebook? You know, I want something that's she can do things with, but that's not going to cause a lot of problems where I have to do tech support. I think one of the things that's kind of intriguing uh, is maybe we aren't paying enough for these, though. Maybe we, this is, this Pixel has shown me kind of, it really is a better experience with a Well, this is the argument, hardware. where is the $600? Well, mm -hmm. I think the 999 one, I think this is the one people should get. I know it sounds expensive, but this is going to last you for years. I well, think you can have, get a great crown like on this one. Oh, yes. Skype. I'm ahead Skype and go back to, uh, there's one thing you thing. can't do. Although I imagine that's just around the corner at some point. Yeah, I hope so. Um, anyway, uh, that's kind of I, I scooped uh, my before you buy review, but that's the basically right there the review. I'm impressed. I am really impressed. Uh, and I feel like it should be people should think about getting it. I know 9.99. It sounds like geez, I don't know. Um, but but I've always said that there's a false economy to getting cheap hardware. Is it that much better than that A3 you showed? Yeah. <laughs> well, God, I, that's uh -oh. a good question. The A3 is a pretty good choice if you want a big screen. I mean, what's nice, that's the other thing that's nice, is there's an ecosystem starting to evolve where they're not all the same. Mm -hmm. The right. A3 is the first real, I mean, the 15-inch screen, the first 15-inch screen. Uh, and that, I mean, it really looks nice. And the Toshiba is nice, but it's HD and the type is just too small for right. the eyes. Right, right. Uh, what I want, what I think I said on the show before, is what I really want is I want to go back to the original days of Dell where you could uh, truly customize your own machine. Yeah. If I could get a machine mm -hmm. from Dell with a touch screen and LTE and lots of memory oh, yeah, and so on, I think you could put together the ultimate machine, which wouldn't probably cost nine ninety nine, but but would probably cost about 800 bucks, 750 and it would be a great machine and would have everything I want. That's I was going to say, not having LTE, I think you mentioned that, Jeff. That's... That's, That's torturing the, me. It's and torturing. it's strange. Why not? Why wouldn't it have it? My guess is 85%, they say, of the users of Chromebooks are Googlers, and they live enveloped by a warm cloud of Wi-Fi through their entire lives. Most of a us are of now. Well, many of us. I, I, I go into offices, you know, I was at, at, a, at a Mocker State Wi yesterday, and, and their, their tech department does... You know, makes you give blood tests to get on and we'll put <laughs> on. Silly. So, you know, the LTE just connects and that's it. I'm on. No problem. But not anymore. Now right. I have to pull out uh, a little box. And um, what do you want? Who's your advertiser now for, for Wi Fi connectivity? Wi Fi? Do you have, don't you have one? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Didn't you get some new thing? Jeff, you mentioned. I did yeah, the Karma. Karma. Uh, which the advantage of the Karma is you pay for the gigs, no, no expiry. So right. if you want to buy 10 gigs, you buy 10 gigs. When you use it up, you use it up. And uh, I think it's $14 a gig, which is a little high. But if you realize nothing ever expires, you're not buying a monthly, that makes more sense. It's on Sprint. Is it um, good coverage? Uh, it's Sprint. Mm -hmm. um, I, now, what about Tinkle? <laughs> Tinkle? Ting? Ting? Ting. Hey, hey. <laughs> Tingle's that other service that you use. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> With chicks, yeah. Uh, so Ting, I don't know whether they have... Yeah, now you can buy sims from them and, 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 and do uh, no longer just CDMA. But I don't mm -hmm. know if they have uh, just Wi-Fi, just data accounts. Why, if Google's going to do a wireless... MVNO anyway, why wouldn't they? Maybe, you know what, maybe that's what's going on, is they're not going to put LTE in here until they have their own LTE card to put in. Right. 
Oh, that would be the way to do it, right? And then you're getting the best of Sprint slash T-Mobile slash Wi-Fi for very little money. Why would that? Maybe that's what we're waiting for. Maybe they are going to... They haven't... Have they said, no, we're not going to do LTE? Reporters asked and said, you know, it wasn't like they were saying, as you thought last week, oh, it'll come out in two weeks. You know, apparently not. That I believe, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they did something. Or maybe they'll do a MiFi card with their new... Uh, because if, oh, if you have a laptop that only works on the internet, then you kind of yeah. need to give people some way to always have the internet. Right. Yep. This works offline in a lot of respects, but it is, of course, better with uh, online. I, Can I tweet offline? No. <laughs> Do you as need to tweet offline? <laughs> Do you really want to? Right <laughs> you want to tweet from your flight? You can't meerkat from it either. What? what? What good is that? You could have Perfect. Google Hangouts. Mm. That's so funny because Meerkat really isn't anything new at all, is it? It's just no. so... No, no, not in, in any way. In any just way. Just the name. Well, and the easy, I guess, onboarding. I don't know. Okay. I don't but know. the concept is not new. Hi, it's TD! Like, it's like, oh, we've never seen anything like this. It's so strange. All right, let's take a break. Matthew Ingram is here. So great to have him. You want to point people to your website, MatthewIngram.com, best place to go? Sure. I'm, uh, I'm currently reconfiguring it. So again, it's all. I sit and listen a little to a podcast tweet while I'm working. Now then we we cannot hear music, so I need to have something to keep me awake today. So sit and fall asleep. I hope you have a good day today. That's a tough one. Or can be. But you never know what they will ask, I think. So you have to be prepared. But I will cross my fingers for you that it goes well.
Boop. Okay, and thank you and good luck for your exam or your I guess it's not the final exam yet, but And I will make some textures on this, but I will cross my fingers for you tomorrow, if it is tomorrow. Uh, medium post uh, mm. uh, by Astro Tele.
color. Astro, I didn't know, for instance, is not his real name. <laughs> it's, it's Eric. <laughs> He's the head of uh, Google X, the moon shots. Um, and uh, this is part of the new back channel, which is Stephen Levy's uh, little corner of Medium. This is the journalistic corner of Medium. Mm -hmm. One of them, yeah. It's his a real job. It's it's his wire right. magazine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and this is basically a transcript of his speech, of Astros Teller's uh, speech at South by yesterday. So some very interesting stuff in here. If you haven't read it, they made a uh, ECG vest that was his first uh, startup in 1999. It was really cool. In fact, I think I'm pretty sure the, this is the body media vest we wore. I wore this, or somebody wore this during the screensavers at Tech TV. So that you could see in real time heart rate, blood pressure, electrocardiogram uh, as the host is hosting the show. I'm pretty sure, unless I had a bad nightmare, I'm pretty sure we did that. <laughs> he said the problem is we got a bunch of older people and people who would theoretically be wearing this vest. And they, 65 to 80, and they said they hated it. And we said, well, would you wear it if it would save your life? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well... Okay, what if we made it so you could fly? I guess. Sometimes. Maybe. But old people are like that. They're not going to say if, yes, no. What if you could fly there for free? There. I don't know. I'm, I'm happy right here. here. Well, I'm trying, <laughs> trying to get my parents a tablet. I my show. <laughs> my life is worth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are we going to be like that, Jeff? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Matthew says yes. Oh, yes. No, I'm fine. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I like the old phones. <laughs> when will that happen? <laughs> oh. Before you realize it. Yeah. There's we harden in our ways, I guess. I'm yeah, starting to get. I don't reality. understand why I need a new computer. Chrome is just fine. Yeah. It has been yeah. for years. Yeah. I feel it's already happening to me. I don't want to go out <laughs> anymore. Uh, so Google X. Uh, one of the first projects he says was called Genie. The, was to fix the way buildings are designed and built by by building a, uh, an expert system, a software genie. Did you ever hear about this? I never heard about this. Never heard about that. Uh, it worked on it for 18 months, spun it out to a standalone business where it has been growing and thriving for the last two and a half years. Okay? Then they did Flux. Oh, no, the company's now called Flux. Huh. Okay. I think Loon is one of my favorites, not just because of the name, because uh, it's a, a Canadian bird, but uh, just the idea. It, I remember when they first announced it, I thought it was April Fool's. Right, which is like great. It sounded, it sounded satirical. It was so loony. You know, man, we're going to float balloons around the world and give people internet. I'm like, sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> Project but, Wing, the self-flying delivery drone. <clears throat> actually are, are going to I think they're going to be real aren't they yeah they, they, are. they are they totally are how about this Makani an airborne wind turbine an energy kite cool idea isn't that cool very the higher up you yeah. go there's the faster and more consistent the wind is so if you put the turbines up in the air and the the speed wait, wait, stop right there where was it the uh, power of the wind goes up with the cube of the wind speed. Oh, that's interesting. So that makes a Isn't huge it? difference. But so does the weight of the turbine. <laughs> oh, that's not. <laughs> so that's the key, right? Is to is to make something light. The the Makani energy kites are one percent uh, as much um, as a, as a as a standard you know turbine in, in a tower. And the center of the virtual circle it draws in the sky is at 250 meters, where the winds are stronger and more consistent, and as you said, considerably more powerful. The thing that I thought was most interesting was some of the the places where he talks about how they failed, right? And sort of why they failed. And like Google Glass, you know, got too much attention and was right. sort of seen as a finished product when it wasn't, uh, which was kind of my sense of why it didn't maybe do as well. Um, but the other one was, I think it was Project Loon, he said they massively underestimated the difficulty of keeping the balloons aloft. Like, we're off by a factor of 10 or 100. <laughs> so not just a little. An order of magnitude wrong. Yeah, I just, I find 
it impressive that he would even admit that. You know. Yeah, except they were that, off by that much. That failure was followed by a success in which they figured out how to make him stay up much longer than they had thought. Ooh. So they obvi- so that's the challenge, right? You take the you take the failure and you make it into something. He says we've mostly fixed this problem, but at the time it was quite stressful. Now, thankfully, balloons stay up for six months at a time, well beyond the three months we need for a viable service. There's the little <laughs> self-driving, self-driving car. And his point about that is is similar to, you know, all the great ideas when you're coming up with the concept don't, well, amount to a hill of beans, but a small hill of beans. It's not until you actually test product in real-world conditions you start to suddenly realize the things you got wrong or the things that you didn't anticipate would be a huge deal. He also says as they get better at it, that's a problem because it's failure that teaches them. So Mm -hmm. the longer the amount of time between our failures, the harder it is for us to improve. That was very an interesting insight. They're not failing enough. It's not, it's too good. Yeah, you guys are too good. (laughs) Stop Stop succeeding. so I think that's this whole idea of failure is just so fascinating. I had a yeah. long conversation with a German or an Austrian journalist today, who was going on uh, with me and talking to me after I'd done my attack on Der Spiegel. We talked about two weeks ago, and you know I keep on saying that the Europeans have to have more willingness to, to to develop in public, which means fail in public, and that that's a precursor. And and yes, we in America fetishize failure. And I always make that joke. I'm not so sure that's true now. I, th- I think that it's just a method of, of being open and learning in public and improving something in public. And you look at the, his talk about saying, well, yeah, we learned a big lesson about privacy in Google Glass. People didn't like it and not having known the picture was taken. Da, 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 da. So, you know, it wasn't that, oh, my God, they've done something horrible. They're pros are evil. No, they learned. Learning mm-hmm. is okay. So here's a good one they learned with the self-driving cars. He said, you know, we knew that... Uh, if the car drove itself, people would, you know, maybe not pay as much attention as they ought to. You know, they'll say, oh, no, no, I'm going to keep my, I'm nervous, I'm going to keep my hands. He said, as soon as we started doing stuff, people were doing horrendous things. They were just, they were crawling into the back seat. They were just, they, it was just horrible. So he said, we realized that the only way to make that this would work is to make it truly self-driving. So we took the steering wheel out. They said, if it doesn't go from point A to point B without any human intervention, it's no good. If it requires any human invention, it's going to be a horrific failure. Because humans, as soon as they think the car's got it covered, just go, okay, see ya. <laughs> There's no backup we, system. There's no, it's like they are not the backup system and don't count on them. Uh, he says, people already do stupid things like texting when they're supposed to be 100% in control. So imagine what happens when they think the car's got it covered. It isn't pretty. <laughs> so... That's that actually is a good explanation. I was I was wondering why are you taking the steering wheel out? Doesn't doesn't isn't that a comfort factor for humans that there's a brake, there's a pedal, there's something I can do if it, if the machine fails? Great, great. That's uh, really interesting. The, the, the human engineering part of a non-human yeah device. That's kind of fun. You probably always do, don't you? I mean, you always have to take a take. Humans are the are the thing that screws everything up. Oh yeah. Well and. and I forget who said it, but my dad, who was in the Air Force, used to love the line, no battle plan ever survived contact with the enemy. Yep. So you can have all the great ideas and plans you want, yep. but people will find a way to do something you didn't expect. U.S. DeWiz in our chat room says, well, why does it have rear view mirrors then if the humans aren't necessary? Well, those aren't really rear view mirrors, those are cameras. <laughs> the little wings sticking out, they're not for you. I want this car, and I will come to work each and every day in it. <laughs> and I don't care even if... You know, uh, Buckminster Fuller, uh, the great Bucky, uh, created something called, remember the Dymaxion car? He said, there's crazy, we're making cars that are not aerodynamic. He designed it like a teardrop. It had uh, some very odd features. It was a three-wheeler, I believe. And uh, it never got anywhere because it, somebody got killed in it. Mm. Had a fatal accident. I did wonder about the car. This car is four wheels in those specific positions. Right. Is that the best you need that? model for a car, or right. is it just because that's what we expect it to look like? I think you have to, as you said, human factors still coming up. Mm-hmm. As long as it has lots of cup holders, I think it'll be pretty successful. Yeah. <laughs> Without a cup holder, it's not a car. The president of or CEO of Ford at one point, I think it was, said, 
they can talk about all the features they want in their new cars, and all people care about is yep. they want more cup, cup holders. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, that was that was the great thing about the uh, the um, uh, Homer Homer Simpson's yeah. car. It had, yeah. it had tons of cup holders. Yep, it's important. And shag carpeting. So, uh, Bon Appetit had an article on the history of the car cup holder. Oh, really? Just in case. Hello. Really? <laughs> I don't know why it's in Bon Appetit. <laughs> uh, ever since George Washington crossed the Delaware to go sign the lease in his new pickup truck, President's Day has been associated with getting a good deal on a car. And while some people buy cars based on gas mileage or sporty looks, we all know the most important part of a vehicle is its cup holder. <laughs> Look at that. Snack tray for car from Modern Mechanics. Hold, holds a Coke bottle. Real demand for the cup holder didn't pick up into the 50s when drive-ins and drive through windows became mainstays of American eating. The very earliest evidence of a complete cup holding comes from a 50s newspaper clipping that describes the snack tray for car that hangs from dashboard. When I was in high school, we still had an A&W that would bring the trays out oh, yeah. and hang them on here. On oh, the yeah. side of the oh high school. We had one at Petaluma until a few years ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> they, then the waitresses were on roller skates. Yes. Uh, I thought it was cool. I, <laughs> I liked going there. It's the best thing ever. Uh, you roll your window down, she takes your skates. You don't even have to get out of the car. No. It's so it's great. Nothing. The best beverage security system of the era belonged to the 1950 Cadillac Eldorado Brougham. Plenty of extra luxury, ultra luxurious limousines has built in bars, but the Brougham how do you say that? Broam was the first Brom. to Brom. was the first to come with a magnetized love compartment door and a set of four metal tumblers. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Perfect That's... for keeping your cognac stable while you're passing the jitney on the way to the Hamptons. <laughs> Patents for the '70s for a more advanced version of Clyde Morgan's pullout tray. The customers looking for a car with a built-in cup holder. We're stuck in the wilderness until 1983 when Chrysler invented the minivan. That is the first, you're looking, if you're watching the video, that is the first minivan. The Dodge wow. Caravan and the Plymouth Voyager. Same car, different names. Pure sex appeal. Wow, that's hot. <laughs> they had two cup holders sunk into the plastic of the dashboard. But it would take another decade for that to become ubiquitous. And that I, shows what's so wrong <laughs> about Detroit. If they if they had listened, if they had a way to listen to the public, yeah, yeah, we all would have told them cup holders and Why plugs we for to our for Walkman. You know what happened in 1994? A 79-year-old woman, Stella Liebeck, sued McDonald's after spilling a 180-degree coffee in her lap in a stationary card car. She got 2.7 million dollars. That's a famous case. I Very believe famous. That judgment, that judgment was actually reversed. You're right. He uh, got, she only got 640000 on appeal. <laughs> the, the case became fodder for endless Leno monologues and a national argument about tort reform, but also a strong argument for the industry-wide adoption of the cup, cup holder. If the car she'd been sitting in, her grandson's Ford Probe, had even one single cup, cup holder, the whole ideal might have been avoided. <laughs> So there you have it, 1984, the very first cup holder for reals in the 1984 Chrysler Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Boy, that's an ugly ass car. Even an ugly color like kind of dopey brown. Mm -hmm. Man, that's we ugly. We had a caravan. Did we you? We had a caravan with the, the faux woody look on the Oh, side. yeah. No, I'm not surprised. Pure sex <laughs> appeal. <laughs> I'm not at all surprised. <laughs> I don't know how, how do we go to that's what I love about this show it's about Google the cloud and cup holders or whatever cup they holder. are it's we're on, you're up in the cloud you have low oxygen does your Chromebook have cup holders no no, no very disappointing I might add you know what I'm excited about <laughs> Google has now an uh, API for Google now or is going to mm, that's, that's a big deal that's big. that's Huge. a big deal um this is the article from uh, The Next Web. Uh, Martin Bryant writing, Google Now will one day be able to work with information from all the apps you use 
I didn't know there was a pilot program with 40 third-party services already. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know that either. But um, th this Wire is again from South. Yeah, this is from South by. Yeah, Wire had a great article. On it. It's from South by. It's uh, hard for you to see these. Aparna Chenapraktan. Even Prana, when I get close up, but director of. <laughs> I actually came really close to getting to them. Because of the Aparna yellow clay, so. Director of Product Management for Google now gave an interesting insight at South by uh, at a marketing land uh, Denny Sullivan session at South by. When asked by the Teddy how Google now will handle competing data from rival apps, she said individual user app usage patterns would help guide what data should be shown. I think it's smart. I mean, I remember when I first saw Google now, and I thought, what if this could show me not just things that are in my Google Calendar, but any type of information, news, weather, sports, all sorts of things. It's a, it's a potential pipeline for all the information you need to know right now on your phone. That's that's huge. I Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things she raises is the notion of, uh, you know, you could have a card at the amusement park uh, that would then tell you, hey, the ride, you know, your re is ready for you. Uh, your auction, and here's some from the Wired... Uh, slide your auction ends in one hour and 22 minutes or a QR code from Walgreens because you're near Walgreens here's some coupons or balance rewards points you know this is this is great stuff the uh, the Danny Sullivan panel was cut short at South by by a false fire alarm oh, shoot. which happened to me by the way I went to a Mark Cuban talk at South by a few years ago. really huh. and, and uh, Mark was being his typical nasty self yeah mm -hmm. and the fire alarm went off and I took that as an excuse to get the hell out of there and never went back <laughs> <laughs> we, we had one go off at a gig on the bed too huh. at uh, UCSF I think there's some I think someone from TechCrunch pulled it there's some renegade uh, yeah competitor going around pulling fire alarms so there'll be an API that's pretty exciting um, what's the difference then between now and notifications on your phone don't they merge I get now notifications, don't I? I think I do. Yeah, I do. you know what I mean. Um, now, oh, it's push versus pull is what it is. So, uh, notifications are pushed to you and get your attention. But I love the idea of saying, well, let me go look at my now dashboard and, and seeing what's going on. And so that's pulled, right? Except it's pushed to the, to the pull. But here's the other question. For the 40... That are doing this, um, is that opt-in now for us with now? Yeah, you have to have the app uh, of you, the you service install the app installed, right. okay. and then it taps into that. And you know, you can, as you can do with any Google Now cards. Also, you can kind of say, "Don't turn show me any more of this." Or yeah, but how do I turn that on? Like, I wait mm -hmm. my beloved Ways. I don't think it comes into now for me, but I use Ways every day. Is Ways one of the forty? I honestly yes, I don't know. Uh, it is that. So, so do I do I turn on now for an app? Well, she's that's what she said. She said <coughs> Google looks at your usage to decide what to put in now. See, so this is where I, I do have a problem. Everybody else raves about now, and I like now, but I don't get a lot now. Right, you need more. Yeah, Google is also doing much. surveys to identify what people want. She says, uh, we also use personal experiences. A visit to Disneyland inspired her to get the team working on support for theme park mm -hmm. ride queue I, times. I will say I used Google Now a lot more when I was traveling. So I was in a different country. I didn't know where I was going. You know, I needed yes, flight information. True. I needed traffic information. If I'm just going from my house to the shopping mall and back or to pick up my daughter, Google Now is pretty useless because it's not going to tell me anything I don't already know. Right. So, so are you interested in this new location? Uh, right. You know, the, the 7-Eleven, five miles away? Uh, yeah. No. Uh, no, no, no. This, this yeah. Feature. Yeah. But when I was in Italy, it was it was a lifesaver. I mean, I, I think I told you guys I slid it up by mistake. And it said, hey, your flight's delayed. Yeah, there's traffic on the highway heading to the airport. I'm like, thank you so much for telling me that. That is like the most important information I found out today. Actually, this is I'm so I'm looking at my now now, and I've got calendar appointments. I've got news stories that are re referred to searches I've made uh, in the past, um, and I've got places nearby. 
But I just got one that was kind of interesting. It said, I see there's something going on at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Do you want me to add that and to your These texts are yeah, a little I, overdone, I but, uh, email, but, it, but it wasn't to, a confirmation because I am flying. You know, Vegas you lose a lot so of said, details yes, so that, in, so it actually uh, added something like, I love the park. In the nice. print. Park. You know, and know, scanning like too, so. I don't get any of this stuff. Mine says, tell Jeff that Google Now is really useful. <laughs> I have to mine, make you know, mine them. Mine all the time. Mine just gives me, honest to God, I get this all the really time. Really stand you out to. Book and Edward Snowden. <laughs> well, you got to do more searches what? on Google, I guess. And, and smartphones and tablets. Yeah. The Snowden thing, the NSA is pushing. <laughs> yeah. We, we know we're watching you. You might as well watch back. <laughs> um, stories to read. That's it. That's all I ever get. And I, and I get the, you know, the card that says it's, uh, you know, it's some horrible amount of time to get over you, Porsche mine. <laughs> Take a helicopter. If only. If only. So is it you that uh, that put this Nick Bilton uh, story in the uh, rundown? Yeah. The Did health that... concerns in wearable tech. Oh, Jesus, it's driving me nutty. Well, it, 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 I put it, I put the two of them together because you, because you have on the one hand, Google just got a patent for curing cancer with a watch. Then you have Nick Bilton, who's turned into the whiny nanny of the technology world. Uh, oh, and, and I, well, and, and, and this story really bothers me because it's it, it's really fluffing around the facts because it's saying, well, cell is bad for you. Most watches, most smart watches don't have cell. They only have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And by the way, we all put Bluetooth in our ears thinking it's safer than putting the phone by our ear. So now suddenly having Bluetooth in your watch is going to give you cancer and kill you? Well, uh, so we, also, there is no know, evidence that cell phone radiation is bad for you. That, too. So, we, so we, you know, he tries to use that. It's, it's a real it's a real straw man with a match. He's and quoting Dr. Joseph Mercola, who is not a credible... In this piece, you know, Nick, I like Nick. Nick's a nice guy. Oh, he's we a love him. Guy, but he's trying Mercola. too hard to go from future man to Fred Flintstone. Yeah. And <laughs> I live in the uh, future, and now I really hate it. I don't like it very much. <laughs> wrote this book was I live in the future now. It's now I don't like it so much. Yeah, so sort of trying to shift off. And, and this I wonder if this is the Times out. telling him we need an anti-editor, an anti-technology. Editor. But don't do it. Don't do it. No, because this is not the, 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 this this fluffs by. And I know what we're going to hear is the New York Times said these smart watches are going to be bad for you. You're going to get cancer. They're going to kill you. Right. Well, you know my watch has Wi-Fi. I mean, it, I don't even it has. A, does it have Wi-Fi? It has Bluetooth in it. It does have Wi-Fi. That's something we learned, by the way, which is kind of interesting. The Apple Watch, uh, Apple was very, uh, made a big deal about how we not only use Bluetooth, but we use Wi-Fi, so that as long as you're within your Wi-Fi network, your Apple Watch can talk to your Apple phone. It needs an Apple phone so that it can do its thing. So you can leave your phone in your bedroom and go throughout your house, and as long as you're still in, or conversely, in your office, and go throughout your office, as long as you're still on the same Wi-Fi network, it'll work. And that was like, wow, that's great. And then uh, somebody, I guess Google said, oh, yeah, Android Wear watches all have Wi-Fi in it, too. We're going to have to turn that on with firmware soon. I didn't know this had Wi-Fi in it. Yeah. What? <laughs> Might as well put it in. It's a tiny chip. I guess it's a cheap chip, and they can just stick it in there. I think it's very intriguing. It seems like almost an intentional effort to, to uh, have hidden features that you slowly enable, like the battery life has gotten better and better and better and better. Yeah. That's actually one of the, the things I'm fascinated with, whether it's Tesla cars or, you know, there are more and more things that are effectively getting smarter and better over firmware updates right. that come over the air. So instead of having to take your car into the shop, Tesla can actually change the height of your the chassis of your car with a firmware update. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, f- everything we have, I guess, is kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Very intriguing. Wasn't there supposed to be a Tesla announcement today or something that... that, that, that must said we're going to solve all your problems with battery worry. You see that story? Not yet. Uh, I why remember, I remember him mentioning that. Why don't you find it? Yeah. We'll take a break while you look. How about that? Right. <clears throat> about the cloud and all that stuff and cup holders with Matthew Ingram, late of Giga owner, now at MatthewIngram.com at Matthew I. I will be back. back. I do not. I have not meerkatted. Okay, just going to give you a chance if you do. To... Okay. It's ridiculous. Here we are in a, in a live streaming studio. I do more streaming hours of video than any human alive. And half my staff is now meerkatting everything. <laughs> Jeff Needles is people, like number five. On the, people were watching.
watching uh, um, Jimmy Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, Fallon, yeah, rehearsing. I had a thousand people watching me Meerkat, and I think I broke it because it stopped at nine ninety nine. It never went beyond that. In fact, then stopped you. So what is you? What are you number three? Who is number one? Mashable, Jimmy Fallon, Jeff Needles, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even at South by Southwest. What? He found his thing. He found his calling. You know what he does? He it's leaves it on all the time. Yeah. Okay. There's a market for that. What happens on Needle Vision? What happens on Needle Vision? We talk. He interviews people. It's crazy. You know the best thing about Meerkat? What? The name. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you stream? Whatever. But Meerkat? You stream sounds like a urine infection infection. Meerkat is a cute little fuzzy animal. Don't cross your meerkats. Mm -mm. Getting really used to the meerkat posture. You know someone's meerkatting when you walk around the corner and someone's standing there like this. I'm meerkatting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got to actually see the camera. I'm meerkatting. And they're walking around like this everywhere. I'm like, oh, We actually had to, we had to formulate company rules about meerkatting. Yeah. Yeah, it's just meerkatting really? people. Well, because people are going around, there's screens open with financials on it. There's oh, yeah. whiteboards with show ideas on it. You can't just go around all the time. Meerkatting the with the, or whatever. In the, yeah, you have to have meerkat rules. Pretty soon you go to the gym, it'll say no cell phones and no meerkatting. Leave but your meerkat at the door. Leave your meerkat at that per Periscope. Twitter's mm -hmm. slow to emerge competition has now started. <laughs> Kevin Rose tweeted today, I saw it, it's amazing. So, so you've done that. Meerkat is way better. Way better than Periscope. You think that's it? It's just the name? Well, I think it helps. Definitely helps. Had Google put something like Meerkat on Google Glass, would it be... Would it have been as big? No. no. It would have caused war in Europe. <laughs> I think it's hard for... Like Google, it's hard for Google or Facebook to do those kinds of things because there are these giant right. entities that everybody kind of slightly mistrusts. Right. Whereas, whereas if it's just a guy, hey, I came up with this new thing. It's cool. You should use it. People are like, all right, I'm. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the New York Police Department and their new spot shotter system. This is a good one. Thank you, chat room. But first, a word from LegalZoom.com. You may be thinking right about now, you know, I need a law firm. <laughs> Actually, LegalZoom is not a law firm. Actually, better, they, they build a network of trusted attorneys to provide the guidance you need in your specific situation at a very affordable price. And during National Start Your Business Month, LegalZoom is offering an attorney consultation for only $50. If you're thinking about starting a business, now is a great time. It's National Start Your Business Month. At LegalZoom.com, it's never been easier. I, when we started our business, LLC, LegalZoom, it was very affordable. In fact, 10 years later, we're still using it. So for more than 10 years, LegalZoom has helped a million business owners just like me. Protect your family, protect your business, trademarks, patents, corporations, and, yes, that network of trusted attorneys that provides the answers to questions you might have. If you're unsure about the best way to start, or if you already run a business and you need some advice, this offer is such a good deal. Get legal advice for your business, no further obligation, for one low time cost, 50 bucks. You cannot get on the phone with my attorney for less than 450 bucks. Go to LegalZoom.com today and find out more. Attorney consultations are provided by independent attorneys. They're available in most states. Get the legal help you need for your business at LegalZoom.com and do use the offer code TWIG the referral box and you will save even more legalzoom.com I can't recommend them more highly Matthew Ingram, Jeff Jarvis Leo Laporte, This Week in Google Police Officers thank you chat room for this story from MSNBC Police Officers in New York City have now a new technology called Spot Shotter you might be happy to hear this Jeff with it they can detect gunshots in real time they're yeah, it's not that new. What's oh. new in the story is that they're, they're installing it in new neighborhoods, and they are finding there are more gunshots than they do. <laughs> <laughs> the $1.5 million system uses 300 sensors to triangulate the location of a gunshot to within 25 meters of where the bullet was fired within seconds. 
it sends a notification to an operator who reviews the audio file to determine if it actually was a gunshot or maybe fireworks or an engine backfire. The system then forwards an alert to the NYPD with relevant information about the number of shots fired, a map of the location, and if the shooter was moving. That's a Twitter feed you want. Wow. See, it seems like that sending it to an operator introduces, uh, you know, it's going to slow things down a fair bit. If someone has to listen to the file and then, was that a gunshot? Was it Nick Cardor slamming? I think it's interesting but that there are people who can tell the difference. Hmm. Uh, in cities around the country, according to uh, the chief of police uh, in New York City, Mr. Bratton, William Bratton, uh, in uh, 75% of the cases, they're, they're, no, they're not dialed into 9-11. 75%? Yeah. Because people go, exactly that. Oh, that must have been a firework or back, backfire. For some that's... reason, I'm, I'm now thinking of the Batman scene where he has all the cell phones uh, up on a screen and you can listen to any conversation. <laughs> and that, uh, I'm sure they're not working on that. Oh, no. Know. They would never do that. Yeah, I would not. This is fine. This is just gunshots. Yeah, only gunshots. If they happen to hear anything else, they can just throw they, that out. They would ignore it, sure. It's a good point, Matthew. They now have an array of microphones <laughs> in every borough yeah. of Manhattan, New York. Like if you said stick them up or, you know. No. They said probably... that to an operator to just determine how serious you were. <laughs> That's a good point. They have microphones now recording constantly every, every all over New York. Yeah, they're listening like to us. Well, they are. Story. You know, well, this is censor. I mean, they're going to be censors of all kinds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, just just everybody's phone is going to be listening to these kinds of things. And if you could get Google Fiber, wouldn't you subscribe in a heartbeat? Oh, yes. Yeah. Why is right. it that only twenty nine thousand eight hundred and sixty seven people have? Subscribed? So that's for the that's for the TV package. Well, that's the TV. I think that's what that's you're right. Says, it, it is. That's right. what okay, it is. Yes. I misunderstood. They don't say what the penetration is for the internet. So they have almost 30,000 TV subs. Uh, in in uh, So Google Fiber is in Stanford. They're conducting a trial, a trial in Connecticut. In Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Missouri. Provo, Utah. Number one city, Kansas City, Missouri. They've been there the longest, 20,000 subs. Then Kansas, 7,000 subs. It goes down pretty quickly. Provo, which is... They've only been there for a couple of years, 2,507, and 194 users in, pro, in uh, Stanford. Huh. But the penetration is not great. Only 13% in Kansas City subscribed to the Google TV, 13% of the uh, Google Internet subscribers. I guess that's less. I thought that was Google Internet. That's no. Not, that's not. That's, that's less interesting. And they're going to sign up for a wire cutting. Cable TV, who are you going to sign up with? You're going to sign up with Google. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, if I had Google Fiber, I'd sign up for their TV. Yeah, I would too. But I guess only 10% did. So why, why isn't it higher then? Yeah, that's a yeah. good question. Is it not a good deal? Well, I, th- I think at first they didn't have all the channels. Then, you know, it was, it was a rollout issue, I think. Yeah, that's what it is. Scooter X is saying no AMC on Google Fiber, no deal. <coughs> that makes sense. You can't get Mad Men. Go on. You're going to keep your cable. You also have to put down a three thousand three hundred dollar deposit. It says. <coughs> so Google Fiber Channel lineup. In Kansas City. Let's see. Um, we can't tell them. That's what would you call AMC Entertainment? I don't know. American Movie Channel. Sounds like entertainment uh, to me. Yeah, I'm not seeing it here. Does it have the Hallmark Channel? Oh boy, I, I'm <laughs> signing up for that. <laughs> Jeez, treacle and trickle. It <laughs> oh. sounds like uh, one of your reviews. Treacle and trickle. Well, in fact, Hallmark got so mad at me when I was at uh, the People Magazine reviewing, they, they pulled all their ads from People Magazine. And believe me, People Magazine had a lot of Hallmark ads. Wow. What's wrong with you, Jeff? I'm just a, I'm just a growling cuss. Of... Yeah. Google Code is shutting down. This kind of saddens me. Uh, according to uh, one of the members of the team... When we started Google Code, there was a real need for this. It was SourceForge and nothing. He said, there's really a risk. The open source community is at this great risk if, if SourceForge... I don't know what's going on. 
proposes. If SourceForge shuts down, you know, all these uh, open source projects will be out of luck, so they create Google Code, but now he says there's so many places you can create and host uh, an open source project, there's no need for Google Code. Hmm. Um, so there's GitHub, but that's a commercial project. Um, it launched in 2006, so there'll be an alternative to SourceForge since then. Quote, we've seen a wide variety of better project hosting services such as GitHub and Bitbucket Bloom. Many projects moved away from Google Code to those other systems to meet developers where they are. We ourselves migrated nearly a thousand of our own open source projects from Google Code to GitHub. Uh-huh. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no point in keeping it going if right. users are going somewhere else. So there is a Google Code to GitHub exporter tool. The problem with GitHub is it's a it's a it's a for profit business, right? You're s- <coughs> still somebody else hosting your true stuff. Well, so it's it pretty cool though. GitHub? Have you been to their headquarters? Oh, I love GitHub. GitHub's headquarters? No. It's amazing because they they have this uh, World Economic Forum held an event there in San Francisco, and it's, they they have a replica of the Oval Office as their as their entrance. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, no, 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 they have all this Talk crazy, about hubris. crazy stuff. They have a huge <laughs> bar. Uh, the founders, you know, serve from it. And um, there's hardly anybody working there because, you know, they're so, they, who, who better to be virtual than get, get right. up? Right. Mm-hmm. This is the empty. GitHub is pretty awesome. Um, it is pretty great. I use it. I install it on most of my computers. Uh, yeah. And you can, you can do it more than just programs. You can do it for uh, writing a book. You could use GitHub. Yeah, actually, uh, I was going to write and never wound up writing about it, but Clay Shirky uh, had an interesting, he posted something basically that was a blog post on GitHub, uh-huh. and I think it was about the, the demonstrations in China. The demonstrations in Hong Kong, exactly, Matthew, yeah, he brought tons of yeah. photos and stuff, and, it was, and I was so mad at myself, I thought, ooh, of course Clay would do that first. <laughs> and a bunch of people, a bunch of people sort of, you know, I forget the term, but, you know, they, they pointed out things that needed to be changed, and... I forked it, but then I didn't know what to do with it. But I still thought it was interesting. So uh, this is a dumb question. Do you have to download GitHub? You need GitHub. Yeah, you need GitHub. Well, no, so you could do it on your Chromebook. You could do it without. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, you just don't need a site. Just yeah, well, just but but it depends how you're going to use it. So for instance, I put on my Mac, I put GitHub software. So if I'm uh, writing software, I can uh, right. put it up on GitHub. And and even if you're just a, if you're multiple people, then that's very useful because it's very. But it really is a version control system, so right. you can check right. in and check out changes to the code See, so they don't conflict. There's Zen Hub for GitHub on the Chrome Web Store. Yeah, I'm sure there's ways to do it. But and that's what's interesting it, about about using it for text is that version control. Anyone who's ever tried to collaborate with people using, you know, Microsoft Word or it just makes you want to put a bullet in your head and. GitHub is really great at tracking, you know, who's got different versions of the file, what changes have been made, condensing them all in, into one file. It's, it works for code. Should work for words. Yeah. I remember when I, my first book that I was going to do with Gina Smith, we were going to use SVN, which was the mm-hmm. very common uh, way to do this in those days. Um, GitHub is also, you can use it for free, so you don't, but... Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's interesting, though, to, that Clay used that for... for uh, that's wild. Yeah, it is. Damn him. Did he do that again, or was that it? I don't know. I think it was a one-up. Yeah, but no, he didn't, he didn't need to. Right. He, he, got his, he got his cool merit badge. Oh. But he didn't come up with a cool term for what it... Like, he didn't make up a, a new word for what that is. Like, it's it's publishing. Get get I, publishing. I, think, I think, Matthew, I, I get publishing. Get publishing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, Google Flight Search has gotten even more useful. We talked about this actually on the radio show uh, with our travel expert. It now has route happy uh, information, so you can see what flight amenities you will get. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are on an airline tomorrow called Spirit. You ever hear them? Mm -hmm. There are so few amenities on Spirit, you actually have to pay to carry on a bag. Yeah, that's becoming more common. And if you don't pay ahead of time, it's $100. If you just show up with your carry-on, it's $100. What do they charge you to check it? I think it was f- uh, 50, 50, no, 25 bucks, something like that. 
was two hundred dollars for four of us. Just show up late with a big bag, and they'll gate check it for nothing. No, I don't think Spirit does that. I don't think there's nothing for nothing on Spirit. They'll leave it on the on the gangway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Your bags won't be going with you. At one point, Riot Air was talking about charging people for the bathroom right. on the plane. They fortunately they decided they, did that. they thought better of that. Thank goodness. <clears throat> did you see what Danny Sullivan reporting this one on Search Engine Land? What, what happens now if you use Google Search in Firefox? <laughs> no. It's It says... Switch your default, a big banner. Switch your default search engine to Google. Learn how. A little desperate for Google. Wow. A little bit, yeah. Did Firefox change to Bing? Is that what happened? Uh, Yahoo think, uh, is Bing. Yahoo. Yeah. yeah, yeah yes. Yeah. Yahoo would be a Bing, right? Wow. I'm going to have to, I don't use Firefox, but I'll have to give it a try. Switch your default search engine. Wow. They must, that must be causing dust. That must cost them a lot of money. That they're not. Those that, search, those default search deals are big money. Yeah. Yeah, because the tyranny of the default. Wow. Well, and he says that since the deal Yahoo search share rose, wow, well, that's like two points, two percentage points. Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo making money on anything is a story. <laughs> yeah, anything going upward is. <laughs> Wait, it's going up. That's not right. <laughs> What's this? I don't understand. You maybe you can explain this to me, Jason. This is kind of all we're doing the change log kind of ad hoc here. You can send a Hangouts message with your voice in Google Now. What does that mean? That means that you can do a voice command inside Google Now to send a message uh, through search. You could do it with SMS right before. Now you can do it a uh, Hangout message. That's a cool idea. Okay, Google. Send a hangout message to Jason Howell. So it'll... The, no such user. Okay, no, I found him. Which account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Don't show that. Yeah. What's the message? Hey, Jason. It's Leo. I'm over here. Get to work. <laughs> hey, J oh, but well now it's... Now I have to type it. Oh, did it not? Uh, what? Well, if I'd done the whole thing, it probably would have done Yeah, it. yeah. But that's cool. So... That's as opposed to say, send a message would do SMS. Right. Send a hangout message will send it via hangout. Exactly. Got it. I don't know if that's a big thing or not. Yeah. I have to say, the easier they can make it to to start a hangout, the better. Because I I felt like an 87 year old man when I tried to start a hangout <laughs> with somebody. I don't do hangouts. I, I, I literally could not figure out how to do it. I know. How to send them a hangout. <laughs> I'm like, I can't figure it out. You do it. It's begun, Matthew. <laughs> We're I don't want to hang out. bow ties and you're going, what's this hangout all about? Why don't we just get on the phone? <laughs> In my day, we'd send it by Pony Express. This, uh, we mentioned that uh, the new Pixel is using a Type-C USB connector like the soon-to-appear MacBook. A lot of, John Gruber has decided that Apple invented the Type-C connector. <laughs> <laughs> Which has uh, caused a, an interesting... Lash and backlash. A lot of tech blogs picked up Grouper's assertion and said and, and asserted the same. And a lot of other people said, "No, wait a minute." Google actually put out a video. A the, video. There's a vi here's the Google Type C video. Um, it doesn't say we invented it, but they kind of imply, you know, it was. Here, let me turn on the audio. Allows us to deliver power, data, display over one connector, one cable, and one port. It's about the same size as a micro USB connector, but it's good for up to 100 watts, super high speed data, and allows you to output 4K display over it. It's a pretty cool idea. Mm -hmm. Ah, see, we worked with the industry to come up with this standard. See, there's an engineer drawing on a whiteboard, so it did come from Google. <laughs> decided to use a deep draw process, which is taking a flat sheet of metal and pressing it into the right shape. By shape. the way, the same technique used to make the Apple Watch. So you make it much harder and much stronger. We designed the connector to have a symmetric and your coffee mug, basically. <laughs> okay. And B-52 tires, but okay. So I do like the Type-C, I'll have to say it, but I love it. <coughs> it's weak in your old age. <laughs> Another thing. 
to what apps you download and update your operating system as soon as you can. To test if browsers are vulnerable, visit the SSL Labs page and, uh, and it'll tell you freakattack.com. Uh-oh, let me do that. Everybody now do that on your uh, Android device. <laughs> freakattack.com. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm, now I'm curious. What's it going to do? Well, it'll t it won't do anything bad. It'll just tell you if you're vulnerable. It will install the. Um, it, will the it will attempt to. <clears throat> Warning, your browser. Okay, eh, there you go. Your browser is vulnerable to the freak attack. You can be tricked into using weak encryption if you visit a vulnerable website. So you have to go. You have to have out of date operating system or browser. You have to visit a vulnerable website, and you have to have a, a software on your. Well, I guess the, this browser is vulnerable. I guess is what it's saying. But doesn't your Chrome update itself automatically? I, th I thought it did. Freakattack.com? Must be, yeah, see what, I think it's the, uh, it's the, uh, you know, what does your Nexus 6 say? It should be all right. This is, uh, let me try it with a Samsung browser. Good news, your browser appears to be safe from yeah, the Freak nice. Attack. So you're, it's, I think it's an I, it's an uh, OS late level update. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, stop yeah. it. I'm as vulnerable. You too. I huh? feel vulnerable. I'm so open. So open be careful. Wow. Is. Popular sites that are susceptible to freak attack. NPR.org. Airtelcodes.com. MIT.edu. Who put this site out? <laughs> Twit, by the way. Oh, this is good. This is SSL Labs. It's reliable. Yeah, the Samsung browser is also uh, vulnerable. So um, I'm happy to say Twit is not. Twit.tv and TechGuyLabs.com both have been updated for... Uh, the vulnerability. Who, um, uh, Giga Ohm. No, sorry, Matthew, just joking. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, on top of everything else, freak attack. Um, who did this site? The one that I'm sending you to? SSL Labs. It's a reliable. It is. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's That's a firm that does, uh, SSL testing. Um, and wow, yeah, look at all of these. Holy cow. I just tested it on the <coughs> X6 that I got yesterday, and, uh, it's vulnerable, but I'm. Installing the now. Uh, Chrome update now, uh, so update now I'm going to check now. it again and see what it's had. Yeah. Oh, so they, so uh, you got, after. So your credit card company came through, huh? Got you a new one? Uh, yes, and I finally received it. <laughs> yay. It's true. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, it's about time. <sighs> okay, so that's, uh, that's good to know. The freak Great. attack is possible when I'm a safe. vulnerable browser connects to a susceptible web server. So the key is upgrade your browser. But yeah, I, I'm updating right now. Yeah, maybe I need to update too. Yeah, yeah update the update fixed, fixed it. Website. Everybody, are you update. using the Chrome yeah. beta or? I'm not in the Chrome beta. You're on the Chrome main ch main channel. Main channel. Well, no, I think I'm in the beta. Why didn't I get or, an update? Actually, you know what? And if I, <laughs> I very well may be in the beta actually because because if I did that, I probably did it a couple of years ago. Right. And at this point, I've just forgotten. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I checked before the update and I was vulnerable. After the update, I'm good. Cool. Okay, if my Skype slows down, it's because I'm... I do, I see a update. Chrome browser uh, <laughs> update. Lots of bug fixes is all they say, but I bet you that's exactly one of them. So I'm going to update my browser and I'll let you know. So there you go, interesting. Um, in the UK, there's a Google tax. There is indeed, What's 25%. The, what? There's an everything tax. What? I'm not exactly clear. But yes, this is this is the political move. It's the new budget, and and, and they've been threatening this. You know, Google's avoiding taxes. Well, the law they're they're doing what's legal. So now they're going to say, well, we're going to tax you anyway. What is the um, tax? It's twenty five percent tax on uh, how are they determining diverted the profits? It's yeah, all this, is, this is right. the, to avoid the Dutch sandwich and the uh, and the Irish, Irish turnaround, or whatever. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, you know, once again, and, and the thing is, if it's discriminatory and aimed at only, you know, one or two companies, that's... It's the you're too big and make too much money type. You damn Yankees. Wow. Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google. 25% tax on the profits. That's higher than the general 20% corporate tax. You see, and yeah, come on. You know, what's... Uh, it's discriminatory. It's unclear how easy it will be to actually implement this tax. Uh, and of course, yeah, how do they know? And who, yeah, 
So it's not everybody that has to pay it. Uh, how can you legally do that? That seems... Just certain companies have to pay a higher tax. All right, we're going to get out of here. Uh, well, I'm going to have fun for a while. Yeah, but Matthew has to go, so... Uh, and and, I, and I, oh, no. I don't want to live here. Don't stop, stop just for me. Don't stop just for me. Don't stop I will stop just for you. Well, no, actually, we've, we're done. We've gone right through it. We've gone through everything. Uh, yeah, there was this was not a heavy week. I've got to say, no. Although uh, Microsoft is developing, there's one more story: software that converts Android phones to Windows 10. Is that a is that malware? Is that something? What is that's, that? Yeah, that's the definition of malware. <laughs> this is something somebody would choose to do. I, why would someone want that? It's testing Windows 10 with power users of the Mi 4, which is an Android smartphone. The initiative, which Xiaomi, who makes the Mi 4 stressed, is not a partnership. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice clause. <laughs> so apparently you can... It over effectively overrides Android, turning the Xiaomi phone into a Windows 10 device complete with Microsoft services. What? This is a story from uh, TechCrunch by John Russell. What? The software does not offer a dual boot option. This is a ROM based on Windows that, that it's like Cyanogen or some other ROM. Uh, so <coughs> you put on your phone. Super great idea. What? That's Too one way to get the... people to make Windows phones. <laughs> Uh, so here's the latest for here's an update from Microsoft. As part of the Windows Insider program, Microsoft will partner with Xiaomi to offer Windows 10 free downloads to a select group of Mi 4 owners. You will be able to flash your phones with the new Windows 10 OS and provide feedback. So not you're not getting like uh, the current version. You're getting like the future version, which is fairly. So it's a beta testing. It's a beta program. testing on another platform. It sounds like it's Xiaomi only though, right? Mm -hmm. This headline implies more than just Xiaomi, but as far as I can tell, it's just the Mi 4. <laughs> Xiaomi says, we're not a partner. We're not a partner. Not a partnership. I'll just so let you what know. Is it? What is it? <laughs> well, you know, what the hell. Why are you doing it? We liked that uh, Satya Nadella fellow. We thought, all right, go ahead. Knock yourself out. That's a surprise. Well, what's, it, what's of interest is that technically it's possible. If it's possible, others will do it. Mm -hmm. It will be, you know, you'll get your... Uh, you're a new uh, boot manager, and among other things, in your Android phone, you boot it, and install a recover new recovery partition, and among other things, you'll say, "Okay, now you can install Cyanogen Mod 12 or Windows 10." Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That it's even possible. Our show today brought to you by Lynda.com. Probably the guys who developed that were studying programming at Lynda.com. That's what I'm thinking. Lynda, actually, a lot of people. Lynda.com is for anybody who wants to learn problem solvers. Maybe you're just curious, or maybe you want to get a better job, take better photos, master Excel, build a website, boost your Photoshop skills. At Lynda, you can learn most anything. Lynda.com, over 3,000 on-demand video courses on all of the tools everybody's using. For instance, if you want to learn how to write mobile software, there are courses on Android Studio, Essential Training, that's neat. That's the new uh, uh, IDE that uh, Google's just started to give away. Swift Essentials Training, the new Apple programming language. There's also courses, well, there's one called Building a Note-Taking to App for Android. A great way to get started. Uh, or iOS, or Windows Phone, where they teach you how to create a mobile app on each platform from start to finish. I love that. Lynda.com. And by the way, the teachers are great teachers, but they're also practitioners. They're they're. People who do this day to day, the greatest photographers, Photoshop. You're learning Photoshop from Burt Monroy, you're learning from the best in the business. Passionate top experts in their field. Thousands of courses. You learn at your own schedule, at your own pace. You can go see how it's chunked up into small chunks so you can watch a little bit here, watch a little bit there. There's full transcriptions so you can literally search to the part you want, download the tutorials, and watch them on the go, including access on iOS and Android. Create and save playlists of courses you want to watch. Customize your learning path. Lisa was doing uh, Photoshop this morning at breakfast. So cool. Stay up to date. Lynda.com works with software companies to prepare courses ahead of time so they're available right <coughs> now. New Lightroom comes out, there's going to be a Lynda course. When the new Logic Pro 10 came out, man, immediately Lynda courses. Same with uh, Photoshop. Same with uh, 
Final Cut. Your Lynda.com membership also gives you unlimited access to all the courses, so that's nice. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, Lynda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash twig, a free 10-day trial awaits. 10 days, that's enough to really sample the wares and decide if this is something for you. It's great. Lynda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash twig, 10-day free trial awaits. Matthew, do you, at this time on the show, we'd like to offer a free tip or tool. You, you don't have to, but if you have something. Um, you know, I was giving that some thought before the show, and this is probably going to come as not news to lots of people in the chat room and lots of viewers and listeners, but um, I got a Chromecast. I think it was for Christmas, and um, I just started using it a lot. Like, I, you know, I played around with it, and, and I used the backdrop feature to show photos and whatnot, but I didn't find a sort of compelling use case other than my daughter trying to show me the latest funny YouTube video on the on the TV, um, but I I set up a Plex server, and now I'm basically just streaming Plex through the Chromecast. So instead of so the Plex server is somewhere else, pull it up on my phone. Plex has Chromecast support built in through the Chromecast to the TV. It's fantastic. Take the Chromecast with me, throw it in a pocket. You know, I'm in a hotel or somewhere. Just so streaming. Does the Chromecast have to be on the same Wi-Fi as you? It does, it has to be, yes, so the Wi-Fi, it works great in the house, but um, as long as you're... Hotels? It, I'm trying to think of whether I've There's actually used it in a hotel. thing that they said they were going to do, I don't know if they've done it yet, where the, you wouldn't have to have access... Be on the same Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah they were talking about that. Yeah, some weird sound thing that they were doing that you would somehow, I can't remember how it worked, I don't know if that's coming. So out. maybe it wouldn't work in a hotel. I haven't tried it now. Do you try that? Okay. And there's something else to do about the Chromecast. I'm oh, excited about right this. Now. Yeah, Yanko wrote oh, the remote control thing. Yeah, yeah. Yanko oh, yeah. wrote about that. Yanko yeah. decided I'm gonna keep writing. I don't care. <laughs> so he's writing on Medium. This is an example of somebody. I was saying his name right, by the way. Yanko. Yanko. Yeah. Rutgers or Rutgers? Rutgers. Rutgers. Former Giga Home guy. He decided I'm just gonna write it on Medium. <laughs> Who cares? This is exactly what it would have been like if he'd written it on a Giga Home. It's a great article. Nice job. So, because Chromecast supports something called CEC, now your TV may use a different name for it. I think my Samsung's called AnyLink. But CEC is an extension of HDMI that lets you send control commands between your TV and an attached device. So, in my case, when I turn on my TV, it turns on my receiver using CEC and vice versa. It tells it, okay, you handle the audio, that kind of thing. Well, it mm -hmm. turns out in the latest firmware upgrade to Chromecast 27946, support for CEC was added to the Chromecast, which means that you should try it. But the TV remote you have already for maybe your Blu-ray or your TV might work with Chromecast. Yeah, you should be able to switch to the Chromecast, and it can switch inputs on your TV and start streaming. And you can press pause... <laughs> or play. <laughs> but your TV has to support it. Your TV and your, yeah, your remote have to work and so forth. I haven't tried it yet, but that's a, that's fantastic. And uh, Yanko got this from uh, the Chromecast Reddit, subreddit, um, Reddit R Chromecast. So uh, actually a good place to go is uh, to this uh, sub uh, subreddit, Ready to Cast. And they have lists of things that work and, you know, what people have been using and Works with my Samsung TV, pause and play on BBC iPlayer is working. Bravia TV, play and return seem to work. Pause does not. So it really has something to do with how it's implemented mm -hmm. um, uh, on your TV and so forth. Uh, so it's kind of cool. So try it, I guess. You know, you yeah, can use your really phone fun. and your, you know, your Android device as a remote, but it's nice to have a remote remote, and they don't come with a Chromecast. Jeff, you're... Number. I'm going to go with the number two. A nice little, uh, Eric Schmidt told this story South by Southwest. The Washington Post has the first person story of this. A Google Translate love story. Uh, two lovebirds met in Haiti, an American and a Frenchman. And he spoke no English, but they were attracted to each other. And, uh, used Google Translate. Wow. And, awesome. uh... 
and, and finally moved in together and got married. When I was in Madrid last week, uh, it was quite amazing that I was, uh, I, so I was sitting through these presentations in Spanish, I didn't understand a word, but they had PowerPoint. So I would point my Google Translate phone app at this PowerPoint screen, ah. and it would translate from Spanish into English pretty damn well and, and, and incredibly fast. It's amazing. Before long, we're going to have simultaneous audio translation on Google Translate. I'll bet you. I hope they do. Of course, Slayer has uh, Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was cynical. You would get tiresome after a while going, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Damn. Je t'aime. Je t'aime. That's, so two is the number? Two people? You stole two of my other numbers, so I went with Oh, my, uh, I did? I'm sorry. I thought, I thought were, none of the numbers were any good. <laughs> I thought the cube of speed was interesting, but I didn't know what it meant. So two, two is good. I like two. two. So we uh, showed you the EarthView extension from Google Maps that was really cool, that when you add a new tab to Google Chrome, a uh, blank page, it would show you a random satellite view from Google Maps. It's called, it was called EarthView, and I still recommend it. It's free from Google, but they've released another one. That's cool, too. So you remember every time I had a tab, I'd have a neat sat sat satellite view? Now, every time I have a new tab, I have a great work of art in all my new tabs. And it is. It's kind of fun, and it's, it doesn't just have to be great works of art. This extension is the Google Cultural Institute, and you can choose uh, what it is that shows up um, and how often it shows up and things like that. It's an extension. It's a silly extension, but you know, on the Chromebook, you can't like rotate wallpapers and stuff, which I kind of miss. I like the idea of having different mm. desktop wallpapers, but this kind of solves it because every time you do a new tab in uh, Google Chrome, you get kind of a new full screen uh, thing. So let me let me show you. That's there. There was the Earth view. This I have to is, say, on, on Chromecast, the 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 backdrop thing where you can show your photos. Um, you know, it mixes in yeah. my, my photos with Art. Just Google photos, so yeah. Art shows up and NASA photos show up. <coughs> you can look at Google what's on my Chromecast, and it'll tell you about the picture. Is that nice? But it, you have to leave your TV on, which is kind of a drag. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So this has some, the Google, it's called Google Art Project. It's an extension for Chrome, and it uh, shows you what buttons are, are there and how often it changes. The default is to change the artwork every day. But I decided to change it every time. I prefer that. So it's kind of cool. Hello. Isn't that nice? If you like, if you like just having interesting backdrops. Remember the days of screensavers. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of a screensaver. You have to have your screen turned on for this to work. So that is a uh, there's a, a new Chrome extension. So I'll give you the both. Somebody saying in the chat room, what's the other one? I like the satellite maps. Um, so that one is called. Earth view from Google Maps, and you'll have to choose. I disabled that so I could use Google Art Project. But if I get tired of that, I just disable Google Art Project, turn uh, the Earth view back on, and now I get more satellite images, which is cool too. These are very beautiful. It's just whether you like. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's just you know because you have the same wallpaper all the time on a Chromebook. It's nice to have something different. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this edition of This Week in Google. With Andy Rooney. With Andy Rooney. <laughs> A bunch of old farts. Great to have you. Great the to have three you. Three Andys. Yeah. Uh, always a pleasure. Find more at MatthewIngram.com, at Matthew I on Twitter. We wish you the best. Come back Thank soon. You. And we'll set, up, uh, we'll set up a little thing so uh, we can help with the college fund. Thanks. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's, that's only fair. Jeff Jarvis, he's a professor of journalism at City University of New York, CUNY, to be exact. He also has written many books, blogs at buzzmachine.com. Geek Sparing Gifts is his latest much must read. Going up chapter by chapter on Medium at geeks hyphen bearing mm. hyphen gifts. Thanks now for that, doing that. Yeah, I think, boy, I'm, you know, we had several Medium stories today. Really? Yeah. I'm starting to think. Yeah. Some great stuff on there. I'm starting to think. It's interesting that uh, Yanko decided to publish on Medium, at least in, in the interim. It's funny. Well, must... It's a great place. You know, if you don't, no one goes to your blog or you haven't, you know, you don't have one or you haven't 
right. sort of fixed it up. Medium's right. right there, it's super fast. Writing is really easy, lots of people see it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, they even have like a top stories thing, which is kind of cool. So yeah, there's some discovery there. Um, okay, I gotta run. Thanks, Thank Neil. you, Matthew. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Matthew. Bye, Thank everybody. you. Thank you all for being here. We do this week in Google. Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. That is 2000 UTC at live.twit.tv. Watch live or you know, get your on-demand after the fact at twit.tv slash twig. And wherever podcasts are stored, you can subscribe. You make sure you get every week's episode or get one of our great apps. There's Twit apps on all the major platforms. And uh, you can watch and uh, listen anytime you want. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Twig. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yay, thank you as Yay. always. Making sure I don't have anything next week. Just checking real fast. No, I'm good. It's next the week. Cultural Institute, exactly. Yes, it is, Nerdy. <coughs> good. We'll see you next week. See you later. All right. Bye. See you, Jeff. Take care. <laughs> Title. <clears throat> Gotta eat chrome. Yeah, eating <laughs> something around eating crow, eating chrome. There was eating there was chrome, something there that I couldn't chrome. like. I have to eat chrome. I must eat chrome. Smart things legal zoom and Linda. <laughs> Uh, the new show is a secret, Dodd, but we will announce, so I'll tell you this much, we will tell you all on April 19th, on our 10th anniversary twit, we're going to do a special twit on April 19th, and we will announce the new show uh, at that time. It will uh, appear on the air in May. I am sure Needles has meerkatted it, so just watch Needles meerkat stream for all the details. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the new show. We haven't uh, done a new show in a while. And this new show is going to be kind of the ultimate new show. And I will host it. That's enough. No more. No more. Uh, still need a title. Needles is now number two on Meerkat. He's, he didn't beat Jimmy Fallon, did he? Don't tell me he didn't. How, how do you find these rankings? That's it's in Meerkat. Point. I know, oh, I couldn't in, find yeah. it for the longest okay, time. Okay, so if you don't have... If I you're am. an Android guy, you just have to suffer in silence. So that no Meerkat is, in fact, allowed. number two on the no, list. No, I'm going to look. Mashable, Jimmy Fallon, J.S. Needles. There we go. Gary Vaynerchuk, Vincenzo Landino. Bad Beef is uh, up and coming. Mike Elgin, Kevin Rose, Guy Kawasaki, Danielle Morrill, DM Grossblatt, Ben Rubin, who's the founder of Meerkat, Leo Le Matt Mazzeo, Mark Schuster, Michaela Engamir. I decided to, I gave up. But I did have an idea that I thought would be kind of fun on Meerkat is to do a bedtime story every night. Wouldn't that be cool? You like that, Megan? Just like at 9 o'clock. What time should I do it? What time should I do the bedtime story? 7 p.m.? Oh, you're thinking children's bedtime stories. <laughs> I was thinking grown-ups' bedtime stories. Leo will tuck you in. <laughs> I could do a, a 7 and a 10. There's bedtime story, and then there's bedtime story. It's always bedtime somewhere. <laughs> Brought to you by Casper Mattresses. <laughs> it's time for bed. Uh, oh, I should tell scary stories. Spook story. I need a title for the show. Yeah, the titles. And then we're going to do it before you buy with the uh, Pixel. And the and the Acer. <laughs> it's so funny. I forget Megan's right behind me. <laughs> and, and so sometimes she just say things. No! Hello! What? If I do it at 4 o'clock my time, that's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Our new show is all about Meerkat. I think you'll like it. Like the whole show's via Meerkat. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey, a dramatic reading. <laughs> Kilroy was.
was here. <laughs> Talking ginger. Oh, that's cool. That's neat. Uh, did you see my pixel? <laughs> Eating chrome. Let's do that. Yeah. Stand by. Here we good. go. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 292, recorded Wednesday, March 18th, 2015, Eating Chrome. <coughs> this Week in Google is brought to you by Smart Things. Smart Things lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, Smart Things is offering This Week in Google listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit. And use the offer code TWIT at checkout. And by LegalZoom. It's National Start Your Business Month at LegalZoom, and the best time to create the business you've always dreamed of. LegalZoom's not a law firm, but they can connect you with an independent attorney. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code TWIG in the referral box to save even more. And by oh. Lynda.com, oh, the man. online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, or creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash twig. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash T-W-I-G. It's time for Twig this week in Google. Matthew Ingram joins Jeff Jarvis and me as we talk about the latest news from Google. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Chromecast, Google Now, some Cool new features uh, and what happened? Yes, at Gigaom. It's all coming up next on Twig. Now, most of the Gigaom conversation was before the show oh, it began. Was. Um, oh. I mean, we could include it at. Let's do it again. Credit. I'll do another one then. Okay. We didn't. We didn't talk. I guess we didn't. Yeah, right. we, yeah it was very brief during. Yeah, the show. you're right. I most forgot. of it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brief show. I didn't we actually really want to dwell on it, so that's right. Yeah. Okay. It's time for Twig this weekend. Google Jeff Jarvis is joined by Matthew uh, Ingram, uh, formerly of GigaOM. We'll talk about Google I.O., Google Moonshots, the end of Google Code, and something cool you could do with your Chromecast. It's all coming up next on Twig. All right. All right. And now, what are we going to do before you buy? You want to get a picture? Yeah. You want it here or there? All right. Come on over. Give somebody your, uh, give Chris your phone. <clears throat> What's your name? Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Where are you from? Uh, from England. Awesome. Yes, I've been for a week. Just for a week? Yeah, I know. Wow. Yeah. All right. Is any particular thing you're doing, or? Uh, I'm taking. I'm a doctor. I'm taking a year out to work with the medics and the medical student provision website. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So. We want to do a, a med tech show. That would be really cool. Yeah. That's yeah. neat. Oh, that's really geekymedics.com? Yeah. Also, David takes lots of David takes lots of medicine. Wow! <laughs> that's very geeky. Very geeky. What kind of medicine do you practice? Uh, I'm, so I've just finished my sort of first two years in training, uh, and then now I go to specialist. Neat! I've taken out two years. What do you want to do? Medicine. I'm not sure yet, probably general practitioner. Right. Have fun. Yeah, so What so part of England? Uh, Castle. Castle. Yeah. Castle on Tyne. Yeah. I just read, uh, a great Peter F. Hamilton murder mystery that takes place in the future Newcastle. All right, okay. It's really cool. Really? Yeah. And it's, it, Newcastle is a, is a uh, kind of spaceport city. They've got a wormhole transit from Newcastle. It's great. You should read it because yeah, okay. the Tyne's a part of it. And it's the Newcastle police. It's really interesting. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. What's it called? Um, chat room will know. Peter F. Hamilton. It's uh, one of his earlier books. He wrote Greg Mandel. It's the first Greg Mandel. Great and White North. That's it. Great and White North. It's not a Greg Mandel. Great and White North. It's really good. Aptly named. As well. <laughs> You're fleeing winter, I think. Yeah, All right. Let me uh, go to the bathroom real quick, and then we'll do uh, this before you buy. So you think here? We'll get rid of the avatars, and we'll do uh, probably do uh, over the shoulder. All right.
I'm doing inside Twit. Real quick. Is my mic live? Jason's like, thanks. Well, just a real quick one. Hey, everyone. There's only a few things to tell everybody, though, so I'll just do this really fast since Leo is busy and we have other shows. Um, this is Inside Twit. Hey, everybody. And I just wanted to remind everybody that Leo is going to be at NAB this year. So he will be moderating Broadcast Minds on Monday, April 13th at 5 p.m. And we're going to stream it live. So I'm pretty excited about that. And we also have a survey up. It's the twit.tv um, forward slash survey. So if you guys want to check that out and tell us a little bit about you, it'll just help us match um, you know, our sponsors with you guys. And let's see. Ooh, our 10th anniversary party. Let's see. No, no, Jammer B's on vacation. I actually made him go away, so. Well, I made him go away and take a break. He's deserved it. I'm just doing a quick update. Yeah. NAB, our survey, and our 10th anniversary party. If you guys want to come join us, please email us at tickets at twit.tv. It will be on April 19th. We will have Kevin Rose, Patrick Norton, John C. Dvorak, Robert Heron, and David Prager in, in the studio. And aren't we missing somebody? Who else is not on this list that I thought? Let's push Roger Chang. Come on, Roger Chang. Anybody that's friends with Ro everybody tweet Roger. And let's get him here, too. He should totally be here. We're going to have food, appetizers, cupcakes. Um, we're going to have a big party. So if you want to come, please email us. Or it'd be better if you email us so we know how many people are to expect. Let's see. I think that's it. And I think Leo's ready to do a review, so I'm going to turn it back over. Where's Leo? <laughs> oh. I love it. Everybody tweet him. We will be running I-5 very quickly. Do you guys really want me doing reviews of tech? We have so many better people for it. <laughs> yeah. said, oh, it's too intrusive. We don't collect any information from that survey about you individually. Uh, we don't, right, Glenn? There's no way, we're not tracking IP addresses or in any way, you know, uh, doing anything with that, right? It's just percentages. So we do this once a year because advertisers ask us things like, well, what do you know about your audience? And we say, well, we don't know anything because we don't actually collect information about our audience in any way. So once a year we do a survey so that we can tell them things like, 20% are college educated and make over 100,000 or something like that. Oh, and there is some, there is some uh, survey information about what you're interested in, which we might use or uh, in terms of like tuning programming and stuff. So, so, so some of it's that. If it's too long or boring for you, don't take it. That's fine. Um, we're not collecting any information about you. So if that's, what, if that's your concern, don't worry about that. And I understand that's a lot. And we, we, we do this every year. We ask a lot of you, and I appreciate it. It really helps us. It means we don't have to do those more intrusive kinds of collection of information, like web bugs and so forth. We don't do that because we know you don't want us to do that. And frankly, uh, actually, nobody asks for that. So adver what advertisers want to know is, you know, well, who's, who, who are these people? How many men? How many women? So we, you know, and the survey is not a perfect way to do it, but we usually get, to, last year we got more than 20,000 responses, so that was very useful uh, 
in terms of us saying, well, and we've used it all year. We're saying, you know, people will ask us stuff. Well, how many people are on mobile? How many people watch video compared to audio? That kind of thing. And when we, and then, you know, we do ask some of your interests so we know better, if, you know, our interests are robotics or whatever. But A, no requirement that you do it. Um, if you do it, you can lie about, but don't. But it, but if you if there's person if I don't know if they, do we ask email addresses? No. Do we ask any? Oh, if you don't want to say what sex you are, that's fine. Or if you're married or not, that's fine. It's more useful to us if you do. Again, it's not about you. It's about an aggregate. Fifty percent are married or whatever. But if you don't want to answer that, you don't have to. It's more. It's I. Do we th we don't throw them out if we get a certain amount not answered, or do we? Okay. We'll use whatever information you give us. Better Instead of lying, not answering is better, right? And you can continue on in the survey even if you don't complete it. So so just if there's something you're uncomfortable about, don't lie, just don't answer. Yeah, we know there's no Roku there. We know, just put use other. Um, we, know, we know there's ways you watch the TiVo and stuff that aren't in there. Just put other, that's fine. Let me uh, log in so I don't have to do that on the air. Uh, it, it's really useful to us, so if you do do it, thank you. I'm very grateful. We only do this once a year. We don't do pledge breaks. We don't beg you. Um, we decide, I decided very early on um, to um, make Twit be a free, ad, free media ad supported. Uh, that was a conscious decision. Um, because I wanted to make it available to everybody. I didn't want to have to use DRM. I didn't want to have to do pledge breaks. It seems to me the best way to do it. Uh, and it has been it, the way that we can grow. Oh, you know, I guess this one doesn't have juice, so I won't. I'll just use it for a physical. The comparison. product cam is still framed as such. Is this okay? If no, I can you reframe it? Um, yeah, well, because, it looks like Carson's good. the Yeah, product. it'd be good to have uh, just a wider shot. So I'm about to do a review of these two Chromebooks here. I did. It's all done. Everything's done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, everything's done. slide this over when it's time to show this other one. So, no, nope, not, not quite. <laughs> yeah, like that. I think that's good. <clears throat> Lock in. <laughs> Although, I guess I could do this so you can see. Yeah, you can see. No, no, that's good. Yeah. Because at some point I want to kind of compare the two screens. All right. All right, I'm ready when you are. I'm rolling. Thanks, Father Robert. Well, uh, I think you all know about the Chromebook cate category somehow, despite the fact that I was the original skeptic of Chromebooks. I've become the reviewer of Chromebooks, and I have to say, I've kind of come around. Um, I see schools using them. Michael, uh, my 12-year-old, uses a Chromebook in his school. It's mandated by the school. It's part of their one-to-one -one program. Uh, I think 21% uh, of uh, computers bought by schools last year were Chromebooks. There's a real use case for Chromebooks, and I, like probably a lot of you, initially said, well, it's just a browser. It's not a computer. That's crazy. What was really crazy is two years ago in 2013 when Google came out with this, the Chromebook Pixel, for $1,200. It was a Chromebook, same thing, Chrome OS, it's just a browser kind of thing. Um, but it was like, if you could if, spare no expense, how would it be? What would you make? And there are people who love it. I, I thought it was pretty great. Still wasn't completely sold. It wasn't as fast as I wanted it to be. It just it wasn't mature yet. Fast forward two years, 
and I've started to use Chromebooks more and more and become happier and happier with them. And at Google has released a new one. Let me log into this. One of the things about Chromebooks that's great <coughs> is that once you log into your Google account, they immediately get all the settings, the wallpaper, everything. So within maybe 10 minutes of signing on to Wi-Fi and logging onto your Chromebook, it's identical to your previous Chromebook. Uh, and this, in fact, if you look at it, does look very similar to the original Chromebook Pixel. There's fewer ports, uh, different ports too, Type-C charging, USB connectors, a headphone port on this side, an SD card slot, which is kind of not super useful. It does mount flush, so you can use it as extra storage if you wish. And a second Type-C slot. That's kind of cool. The Type-C connector is for power. That means you can put power on either side of the Chromebook and have video or data come out of the other side. So it's a very flexible setup that way. And again, the Chromebook is a weird 3.2 aspect ratio, the Pixel, like last year or two years ago. But it is the best-looking retina display I've ever seen and just gorgeous. Uh, it's also a touch screen. So that means you can use it. Let's uh, let's go to a, a website. How about uh, twit.tv? Nice keyboard too. Very easy to type with. Decent travel. Lights up. The new one lights up even better than the old one did. Um, they've improved that backlight, and it's not typing at all. Hello, Chromebook. Well, how about that? I don't know what's going on. Let's pause for a moment. I figure out. That is weird. It's frozen. I hate this thing. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, let me. Uh, yeah, maybe restart. Let me, yeah, let me restart. So, it is a lot faster. This is a, a, a core to. Uh, what is it? An Intel i5 processor, Haswell. Amazing battery life. It says I have 14 hours. I've got between nine and 12 hours on the on a single charge each time. It's which is really great. You can carry it around. And it is super fast. So with with uh, eight gigs of RAM, fast SSD storage. Watch how quick it is to turn it off and then uh, turn it back on again. Let me let me uh, sign out of my Chromebook here. It takes a while to shut down. So let me, uh, let me do that. I'm gonna shut down and wait a few seconds as it shuts down. And uh, we'll cut out the part of me waiting while it shuts down because I really want to make sure it's completely shut down. <clears throat> now watch as I turn it back on again start counting ready just turn it on 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005 it's booted up so 5 seconds boot up now of course I'm going to log in and you shouldn't look while I log in this is one negative uh, to uh, the Chromebook is the only way to log in is with your Google account and if you, like me, have a nice, long, complicated Google password, that's kind of a disadvantage. I had to end up uh, memorizing it. It is a touch screen, uh, and that's actually pretty awesome. Let's go to, uh, I don't know, twit.tv, and I'll show you why, why this is cool. The touch screen now lets you pinch and zoom, so if I see something and I want to see more detail, I can pinch and zoom on it, which is great. I can also, of course, scroll. I don't use touch all that often, but the times you want to use touch, it's great. Also, Chrome OS has gotten more mature. In fact, if you look at the taskbar, it really almost feels like a, a full-blown operating system. It's kind of a Windows-style taskbar. It even has a Start menu, and in the Start menu are apps. Some capabilities are added via extension. Those show up here. Some are added by apps. Those will show up down here. And apps are kind of uh, full screen, so they're more like an actual application. For instance, uh, I can... launch Authy, which is a authentication program. You see it launches as a window, just as a as an app would. I've also got a chat on here now, which is which is cool. And so I can do a lot of the things I would do, Evernote, uh, on a regular computer as an application as well, uh, on the Chromebook. It really does feel like a full-blown computer system. And with 8 gigs of RAM, with an i5 processor, I didn't get the ludicrously speedy version, the, the 999 version is still really, really fast. The negative is, I just said it, 999. It's very expensive, but I have to say, Chrome OS, even though you can get a two or $300 Chromebook, when it really is on nice hardware, a beautiful screen like this, a touch screen, 
with the uh, capability of, of launching things really fast, it feels more like a real computer, and in many respects, I feel like this is everything I need. I just, I really have kind of, I hate to admit it, I've fallen in love with Chrome OS on the 999 Chromebook. But let me show you another one, and then we'll give you the pros and cons on each, because this is Chromebook Day at Twit. This just came out on the 18th. This is from Acer. Whoa! This is a big one. The Acer Chromebook 15, the first 15-inch screen on a Chromebook. Now, Chrome has Chrome OS has a nice feature. You can change the size of the fonts. You can change the uh, the res the, uh, the magnification of Chrome so that even on a big screen, this is a 1080p screen, uh, I can see quite well. And there's something to be said for that as well. Let me uh, go to Twit. TV on this one, and what I've done uh, is, uh, whoops, am I not on the, oh, you know what, I never set this one up for uh, the internet, let's go back and do that, sorry, cut, yeah. ill prepared today, this one did, I okay, let's go on the internet, so let's, uh, we'll pick it up from the beginning, so this is kind of cool. Back. This just came out and yesterday up. Uh, on March 18th. A little back. A little Stay up. It. How back? He cannot go wide on this. Take your notes and all this. But now it is. In so there. this is the other one. I'm kind of excited about this. This is from Acer. I don't think you March can see the texture. Or two days ago. This is the Acer <clears throat> Chromebook 15, a 15 inch Chromebook for about 300 bucks. Okay. So that's the biggest screen I've ever seen. It's I need to take screen. some it's not a super the great, top uh, screen. branches and the then. Size makes it very appealing. I've had it is finished and ready for Chromebooks print. To older folks with poor vision um, because, well, sometimes it's kind of hard then, to read the screen. And then, of course, we need but to make some. But they've added to Chrome OS the ability to zoom, the, uh, magnify the, uh, the text, uh, rather the, uh, the browser window a little. Uh, leaf and stop on it. The uh, ability to choose larger but, fonts. Uh, uh, let's type the right URL for twit.tv. He says I'll learn. Um, so the lack of pitch and zoom maybe isn't great, but you can easily. And I apologize for not being so, so. For older folks, this is now very easy to read. This night, um, and has all the features of Chrome I like. It's very secure. If you ever get I have been this, really list, tired. But uh, Mr. Laporte and his tweet broadcast on Netcast helped me to the night, so tomorrow we are fresh again. And uh, I will thank you for now and. Uh, We will go back to uh, reruns, and I will load this one up. And it's not up before uh, about four or five hours, so that's the time it takes. So that's how it is with that, because they are very big these files. So, but uh, thank you. And hopeful I see you again tomorrow. Bye.